Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Formula 4 with me, CRG Geo, George Morgan, back on your screens once again for another, uh, well, another tasty affair. We are here in Abu Dhabi, all known as the grand finale in all of motorsport in Formula 1, but this time we're coming here in round 8. So i got to say, looking forward to it. Actually, we'll say this, round 9, not round 8. Round 9, call me corrected. But we are here in a night where we're expecting to see some drama. We've got a full grid, grid of cars, and I'm glad to be joined by Yestin Thomas. Yestin, how are you doing? Good evening, everyone. And uh, personal, one of my uh, favourite circuits is uh, the AS Marina circuit. So hopefully we're in for a good uh, evening of racing. And uh, I'm doing okay. Just looking forward for the action. Absolutely. We're going to have a very, very hotly contested affair. Lots of cars on the grid, of course. Like we said, a 20-man squadron out on track for each of the teams. And if you look at the Drivers' Championship, Aylan is still leading the way. The Team Nintendo uh, are looking exceptionally good right now. They've got a driver in P4 in the championship. Glock, of course, their new acquisition, has only been in the car for a short amount of time, but has already managed to whittle himself up through the higher echelons of the championship. But Aylan is still on top spot with 132 points. Two points behind him in second place is Drofdas, of course, representing Team JCB, and his teammate Paulie Orange in P3 on 130 points. But the man we all want to talk about is Total P's. He won at Spa last week, Yestin. Yeah, a very good drive. With uh, he obviously started on pole, which was uh, which caught me out by surprise, uh, 100%. And uh, he did lose the race, uh, the race lead with an incident, but he uh, clawed it with a late safety car at the end and took a took a very good win that's two podiums in the last two races for him so hopefully he can keep it up tonight yeah well speaking of total peas we're now watching him out on track and uh, he's looking to go quick yet again of course and this man is certainly no, nothing well he's certainly not to be reckoned with that's for sure he has a lot of potential uh, behind him huge driver for jaguar and uh, as he makes his way round towards turn one does so with great aplomb. Looking good right now is Total P's. Now making his way around the next left, through the next right, of course, through this very complex Sector 1 here at Abu Dhabi. Looks can be deceiving at this circuit. The corners may not look too aggressive, but trust me, they are sharp. As soon as you get into the nitty-gritty of it, brush any of the curbs, you could be sent off into another realm. But as you can now see him rounding the Ferrari Arena curve, he is now making his way down through the long stretch past the DRS line where it will activate. Now on his fast lap, He's going to want to set a best lap as possible here in the early stages, set the pressure for the drivers behind him as he makes his way down towards the next left-hander, of course. This being a very tricky corner, you're turning back on yourself into the next right and then all the way around this next swinging left-hander. Round turn 10, and you can see the stands on the right-hand side. The crowd's littered in anticipation, watching all the racing that's about to unfold here at Abu Dhabi. It's going to be absolutely sensational. Up through the next chicane, that being turns 11, 12 and 13. Up through turn 14 before you round into sector 3 proper. As infamous Pillars lands on 133.282. Total P's now rounding this next right-hander. Looking to split the deficit. Comes around the next right-hander again into the next left. And uh, this, of course, will lead him 
Down towards turn 19. Now down towards turn 20. Bloomstar up to P2 with a 135. Two seconds off the pace of the um, MTV car. And that's cutting the corner total. Pillars not happy with that lap at all. So Pillars is your man to lead the way so far here in Q1. A second person that uh, had a bit of unfortunate luck in their, um, their qualifying runs was Glock as well. So there's two of the big hitters struggling to get a lap in. They, uh, Glock was... Uh, a little bit of an impediment from the car in front. I couldn't quite tell who it was, but uh, very unfortunate for Pease and Glock there, who haven't managed to get the, uh, a lap time in early on. No, not at all. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they get on, of course. I mean, we will wait and see how this all unfolds. As we know, if we witness infamous pillars coming down to the next left-hander, and uh, he'll be on a cool-down lap now just to sort of settle his nerves and uh, he'd be happy to see his MTV car out on track. MTV, obviously, after last week, they only had one finisher last week yesterday, and that was Chazza, who's currently in the pit lane. And uh, he certainly did carry the team that day. Unfortunately for MTV, only with one finisher at Spa. And we know that Eau Rouge can be a very dangerous place. That's exactly where Total Pit, well, say Total Pillars, Infamous Pillars, landed himself into the wall. And uh, not ideal at all, but uh, excellent to see Chazza picking up the crumbs to the for the pink, pink squadron, should we call him? Yeah, they did well, as well as Jaguar, who had a who had an absolute storm of a race. I, I wouldn't have called that one the uh, Rinwood this time last week. So, uh, yeah, so obviously we can't uh, base everything on the uh, qualifying sessions. Uh, we'll have to wait until the action unfolds to see what we will get from tonight. And uh, Paul Watson is uh, running a very interesting helmet with his... Uh, with his Jaguar, it's very colourful. I don't know if it matches, but uh, you certainly got the uh, the black part of it correct. It's just the other colours are a bit, and not quite Jaguar themed as he comes around the last corner and up to the line to set the one thirty six point four that puts him P eight and slowest of the runners at the moment. But uh, there's plenty of time for that to uh, change. Yeah, I mean that's a stunning green livery that on the Jaguar car and. Paul Watson setting his initial lap. He's not too far off the pace. Uh, only currently four tenths of a second off ice stream. So he's still in the mix. It's still early doors here. The track's still yet to warm up properly. And we're only into the first, should we say, seven minutes of qualifying. We've still got like another 11 minutes remaining. Only eight uh, times set at this moment. Total P's, uh, Paul Watson's teammate, currently out on his out lap. He'll very shortly be looking to nestle himself in a full quali lap. Now, remember, he took pole position at Spa. Now, Total P's, of course, he had that few, well, he had a few technical issues going into the winter period, which obviously had disallowed him to race for Jaguar. Jaguar were really struggling to find a good, capable driver to replace P's during his time away from the championship. But he's come back in good form, obviously going off that win at Spa. How key is it for him, Yestin, to actually continue this run of form as he just catches the barrier on the left-hand side? But how key is it for him to continue this great run of form after Belgium? Well, I think the first time I uh, saw Pease was in um, Hungary, I believe, and he, he had a bit of an incident at, uh, in qualifying. I was thinking, oh, another incident for Jaguar. This this won't be very good. And then at the end of the race, I was uh, I was hailing him as he went from 17th to 3rd. Obviously, last time out, he won in Spa. So he really would love to keep this form up for the sake of him and his team. He's got, uh, there's absolutely no reason why he can't. So hopefully he can, and we'll see it uh, tonight here in Abu Dhabi. Absolutely. Well, he certainly deserves it. He certainly worked hard, and I've got to say, it's great to see him return um, to the championship. And uh, he gave us a great treat to watch last week. It certainly was action-packed at Spa, and uh, you wouldn't expect anything less than uh, that from the legendary circuit. As we now see P's coming round the next right-hander. He's into Sector 3 proper now. You can see the car's just whitt whittling its way by. I I'm not sure what car that was, but as we now see P's making his way through the next right, through the next left. Um, still hanging out on track, looking good. Just trying to hit every apex. And uh, he's looking particularly smart. He's trying to maximise his potential out on this track. And he's doing it very, very well. But he's coming into the pit lane. Must have been an invalidation somewhere yesterday. Yeah, there was an invalidation in the uh, last sector. I believe it was turn 19, the uh, the left-hander, where you get very close to the uh, to the wall on exit. I think he cut that a bit too much, and uh, that was the uh, reason of the invalidation. So there's two runs now Pease hasn't got in. Meanwhile, Glock, who obviously had a bit of trouble in his first run, he's out on the uh, on the same set of tyres he uh, he was on earlier. See if he can. Uh, 
get a lap in. Yeah, Glock coming round towards the hairpin bend now. We're just seeing this very, very dominant red livery out on track. Of course, not just the livery for Ferrari, also the livery for the Nintendo Racing Team. And as I say that, Matteo from Team Nintendo goes into fourth place to the 134.425. A great lap by Matteo, who is currently leading the Pot 3 Championship, but he's showing more than Pot 3 pace right now. He is only, and I say only... Uh, it, it, it may be quite large in the extent of things, but six tenths of a second off Paulie Orange. That is not bad at all, Yestin. Yeah, a very respectable lap time for the uh, Pop Free Championship leader in the Nintendo. And uh, yeah, so it's a fairly nice lap, that is. He's got a nice little buffer 12p behind. And uh, yeah, that's uh, very good for Matteo. Yeah, sensational uh, from the pop three man. You just know that this this championship does demand improvement, even from the drivers who are currently topping their respective pot championships. It's in their necessary mentality to improve from pot three and pot four, as we now see uh, Glock round in the final corner. Now, what's he going to set? There's going to be top spot for the man in the Nintendo Cup. P1 with a 133.215 here in Q1. A sensational lap from Glock, and he smashes it by near enough, just under... Well, just over, shall I say, half a tenth of a second. Sensational, Yestin. And uh, those are on a used set of tyres, like I mentioned early on. And, uh, well, that's just a little bit quick, isn't it? And uh, and uh, they'll, they'll definitely do him a world of good in terms of confidence, especially after invalidating the, uh, the opening lack that he had. So that will uh, definitely boost him and Nintendo's uh, confidence. Yeah, well, he looked like he was on for a victory last week as Andenge comes home into P3 as well. He's in Sector 2 right now. There was a mix-up at the top because I think Chazza actually managed to get up into P6 as well. So once again, Chazza showing some good strides in well, from the Pot 2 standpoint. Currently fourth in that championship, but he's starting as well to show form that is certainly earning the right for him to be higher up the pot order. He certainly is looking good, Chazza. And getting closer to his Pot 1 teammate, Infamous Pillars, which is great to see for MTV. Obviously, the gr obviously the current signs in the Constructor standings, we've had a total change around. Jaguar were at the bottom of the Constructor standings at Belgium. They're now up to third place. MTV down to P5. BMW up into P4. Nintendo still lead the way on 397 points. And currently, approximately 60 points behind them is Team JCB. But how incredible was that result from Jaguar last week? So I know you touched on it earlier, Ed, Yestin, but they are up to P3 in the championship. That's incredible, isn't it? Like, like I said earlier on, no one was really expecting it uh, for Jaguar to have such a good race and MTV to have an absolute disaster. And it happened. You know, these things do happen. And it happened last week out in Spa. And that's why uh, Jaguar are P3 in the uh, constructors. And uh, just want to say that the three drivers who haven't set a lap yet, Total Peace, Blaze and Aylin, you fully expect them all to uh, get themselves into the next qualifying session. Obviously, Aylin was championship leader. I think he still is. And, uh, well, they still haven't set a lap yet. They're all on one. But uh, it's very interesting to see that those three are keeping it quite late. Yeah, you have to think, certainly where Total Peas is coming, well, certainly from his standpoint, he's already invalidated two laps. Glock has retired, he doesn't see any need to go out again, and he's probably right, might as well save the compound of tyres, uh, hence why he probably went out on those two lap old softs. Uh, I mean, it does need to really ruin another set, as we now see Total Peas round in the final corner. This time he's going to bank this lap, as he comes round the final corner here in Sector 3, across the line, and it's going to be P5 for Total Peas. A great response, so 133.757. So that'll see him, you know, comfortably through. Blaze is about to come round two, making his way around the next left-hander. He's also in sector three, coming up towards the next right. This, of course, being turn 20. Turn 21 will beckon for the BMW driver. Coming around the final corner now, swooping through that bend, looking ever prominent. Here goes Blaze, knocks himself up to P5, knocks Total P's down to P6. Maybe a side of things to come, we're not so sure. With a 133.516. Goes over two tenths faster than Total P's. Great lap from the BMW man. Yeah, that was solid uh, from uh, Blaze. He's done very well there to get himself into the top five with, I believe, his first run of the session. And if he did a mistake, then I don't think he'd have enough fuel to get himself uh, round the set another. Here comes Elon coming into turn 20 now to see if he can uh, get himself in the mix. Going into turn 20 and 21 now. Make sure he doesn't run too wide on exit, which he doesn't. 
and he comes across the line. Only P11 for Aylin with a 134.547. A little bit of concern with Matteo qualifying him, but uh, I think that will safely do it so far for Aylin. Well, it certainly will get him where he needs to be. He's now going to be in Q2 as things stand. But plenty of drivers still on track, like all shot down, who is now coming round the final corner. But no, he's coming into the pit lane. So no improvement from all shot down. So his place is in jeopardy potentially here. Uh, yes, then we've got Xerxes out on track for MTV. He's looking to get himself out. Paul Watson is about to come across the line. A 141, not improving at all there, but he's still out on track. There's still a chance for Paul as, as long as he can get out quick. Paulie Orange is retired. Pease is retired. So is Droftas, Infamous Pillars and Glock. Have we got an update there, Yestin? I think there's been some sort of incident down the back straight between these two. And Denz is driving slowly. Uh, he's on an out lap. So you, I think he wanted to uh, just grab his popcorn and see what was happening. And... Uh, I believe there's been there was an incident down the back straight, but I'm not too sure on that one. Blaze has retired as well, but I believe he is back in the pits. But I'm not too sure on that one. There was a lot of yellow flags going on down the uh, back straight, the the main straight, and uh, I think there might have been a bit of an incident. Well, there's plenty of cars out on track in the lower echelons of the table. You've got Chewy out on an outlap, Bloomstar, as well as Energetic Six. Uh, Paul Watson out on a fast lap, uh, looking to go quicker again. You just you can think that he was obviously conserving that ERS after potentially having his lap uh, ruined at some point during the circuit. So he's just out here now looking to go quicker. Let's see what Paul Watson can do for Team Jaguar. Coming around towards the next right-hander. He's got another right to take now. Oh, he's overshot it slightly. The angle was not quite right. Uh, hopefully that won't cause too much damage to his time. Oh, a bit shaky on the outset. I think he's struggling slightly with the tyres. And uh, it seems to me that he's finding a lot less grip now than what he was before. Didn't hit the apex there like he would like to. Coming around the final corner. And uh, I think he's going to struggle as he comes up across the line. Is it going to be an improvement? No improvement yet from Paul Watson. So I got a feeling that his, his uh, time on track in qualifying is going to be in jeopardy. Ramsell is out on track too. And uh, looking to whittle his way up from the bottom end of the grid. Incidentally, his best time is a 152.9 at the moment, so he's currently uh, near enough, around 20 seconds off the pace, or, or just under that, should I say. Probably say more like 14.15, but Dan Deng is retired from the session. Energetic 6 on a, on a lap as well. He's in jeopardy, currently rounding Sector 3 now. He's coming into it proper, just rising through the chicane. That, of course, being through 11, 12, 13, now round 14. Heading round turn 15 now. He's going to have turn 16 and turn 17 beckoning. BMW could really do with another man going into Q2 because they've got currently all three drivers down in the relegation or the elimination zone as they now come round the next left-hander. Down, oh, a little wiggle there. Energetic 6 a little untidy out of that uh, corner. Round in the next right-hander. Maybe an invalidation there as well. We'll have to see when he crosses the line. Energetic 6 he hasn't got much of a choice. If he wants to continue, he's going to have to continue. P12 for Energetic 6. He escapes the drop zone. Sensational bottle there from Energetic Sticks to stay in qualifying, at least for now. And he's got teammates out and about as well who are looking to get through as well. But BMW need to get cracking here, Yestin. Yeah, so Energetic Six has done his job. Uh, Ramsell improved his lap by 16 and a half seconds. Yeah, he's still around about a second off uh, going through in this qualifying session. So I don't think he will have another lap. Paul Watson is out of this qualifying session. He's in the pits as the checkered flag comes out and streams and Bloomstar both in the JCP Bloomstar comes across the line he is out he's improving his lap time but he is out by less than a tenth he is out of this qualifying session as the JCP waiting for streams who is driving very slowly so it looks like his qualifying session is out as well and we're down to walls shot down can he find a few tenths to get himself into Q2 yeah, this is going to be a groundbreaking lap time potentially for all shot down. He needs to make it happen for him now. And you can see another BMW car in the background. I believe that's Ramsell following him in as well. As uh, Oh, Ramsell's DNF'd. Ramsell has DNF'd. He's lost the car out of Sector 3, it looks like. And we're now seeing all shot down. He's the last of the BMW cars out on track. BMW could potentially go into Q2 with three cars, which would be so vital for their prospects here in this race. As all shot down. Comes around the next right-hander. They're 
currently fourth place in the championship. Now, every position counts, certainly here at Abu Dhabi, where overtaking opportunities can be few and far between, and it's P17. No improvement at all. A little bit of improvement in terms of time. Nothing in terms of position. All shot down is out. So is Ice Streams. Paul Watson, Ramsell, Bloomstar, and Chewy who is currently in the pit lane. In fact, I think Chewie will stay in. It's going to be Bloomstar all shot down, Ice Dreams, Paul Watson and Ramsell out of Q1. Sensational, Yestin. Well, except for Nintendo, the uh, best performing team out of that, I would say Jaguar. And uh, they've done very well there. Worth GCP and BMW losing two cars in the uh, first qualifying session, which will be a big blow for them. And uh, they will uh, be definitely disappointed with that performance. But Nintendo and Jaguar have had a really good qualifying session there. They certainly have. And uh, i got to say, you've got to look at Infamous Pillars as well. Responding to the chaos that was the Belgian Grand Prix with a P2 here as well. Just tucked in behind Glock in Q1. That's certainly a good sign of things to come. But obviously, you've got to keep your eye open for the likes of Aylin as well. I mean, I, I do not believe that that was his best qualifying performance. He finished behind his teammate, Matteo. I really do believe that uh, we can see some improvements, certainly from Aylin. As we now run through the standings, Glock with a sensational bit of qualifying pace in Q1. Obviously, didn't show up his full pace, only um, currently around about seven thousandths of a second behind or in front of Pillars. Pillars in P2 responding well after that incident at Belgium. And Denge P3, dropped as P4, Blaze P5, Chaz of P6, Total Peace P7, Paulie Orange P8, I'm Sloth P9, Matteo P10, Aylin P11, Energetic 6 P12, Xerxes P14, LP14, Chewy 15, Bloomstar all shot down, Ice Streams, Paul Watson, and the latter all eliminated. But uh, as we're about to head into Q2, folks, yes, let's talk about MTV because that was an absolutely scintillating performance by the team. All of them out, up into Q2. Just how vital is that in the context of qualifying and indeed the race as well? It'll definitely give them a confidence uh, booster with all the all of them uh, coming in. But as we saw last week, qualifying is, uh, is, isn't is really a, a good guide sometimes. Obviously, like we saw in Belgium with the uh, shenanigans and carnage going on, it, uh, a good qualifying session means nothing. And uh, hopefully they can keep this up uh, for Q2 and Q3. And hopefully they can keep it up in the race as well. Absolutely. Well, all of them pack a huge amount of potential. MTV have done this before, of course. Uh, who, who can remember Monaco when they had literally a train, three of their cars, uh, literally gathering their way and giving each other pace going through the Monaco circuit. And they were really providing headaches to a lot of the drivers on track. And they're very capable of some really, really amazing things. And I've got to say, given the, the, the cal caliber that they've got, I'm Sloth is an improver. The likes of Chazza has been sensational in pot two. And Xerxes has seen, you know, a real improvement in his lap times. I think even today he's up into Q Q2 now. He's currently bottom of his pot championship in pot four. But to get into Q2 for a pop 4 driver, that is an incredible effort. A huge effort there from Xerxes to get his way into Q2. And he's done himself and MTV very proud indeed. Of course, we want to hear your comments as well, folks, in the live chat. Please post them in as well. You can have any questions at all for me and Yestin. Please send them in. And uh, we will, of course, read them out to you as well. We're just about to head over to Q2 in qualifying. Yestin, what can we expect? Um, we can expect, uh, well, we can expect five drivers being eliminated from this session. And we can also expect it being very close as well, because there's a, a few drivers, like uh, Aylin, for example, who might not be particularly on the pace today. It might be something to do with the setup, or or maybe just the track in general. He might not be a fan of the Asmurina circuit. So there'll be a couple of quick drivers that might not be, uh, might not be up to pace. And it's going to be very tight and uh, it should be exciting to watch. Yeah, well, certainly this man has every reason to be excited. Xerxes up into Q2 and uh, what a great sight indeed. Hasn't had the easiest of seasons, of course, and uh, has followed up after a, a very, very difficult Belgian race. He, uh, of course, had a, a DNF at Belgium, DNF at Hungary, DNF at Spain. Uh, his last race finish was at Monaco and uh, then he had a DNF before that at Vietnam. Um, and that was obviously his first race in the car. But he's here today, and I've got to say, this could be a very different Xerxes uh, on hand here, and uh, could very well likely become a figurehead going into the race, Yastin. 
Indeed, and uh, here he is starting his uh, qualifying lap, just going up to turn two. Make sure he he clips the apex, doesn't run too wide at turn three to avoid the uh, curb, so you have a bit of a bit of a fun ride if you uh, jump on them. If we're going into the chicane, make sure you don't run too wide there. Make sure you set yourself nice and ready for the hairpin. Make sure you have a good exit from the uh, from the hairpin. Now flat down and open the DRS when, when it's available, and he has, as he flies down the back straight, hoping to reach around about 205 miles per hour. He hits 204, just about gets to 205 for breaking into the chicane. Very tricky chicane, especially on exit with the, with traction before he reaches the second DRS zone, which he opens, and uh, flies down the second main straight before heading into the uh, tricky three-part chicane to start the final sector. Make sure he doesn't uh, run too wide or cut any of the corners. Very easy to invalid here. Doesn't run wide on exit, which is good for heading into this left left hander. Pillars sets the benchmark with a with a 38-2, which is beaten by Blaze. As uh, X is still going into this right hander. Very tricky to break uh, and turn in before going into the double left hander here. Make sure he doesn't hit the wall on exit, but running as close to the bar as he can. Could have afforded a little bit more room there, but going into the corner. Make sure he doesn't run wide, which he doesn't. Now going to the last corner, third gear, and make sure he's a nice exit. But he spun it, and the car is round, and that is X's qualifying session gone. It looked pretty clean until the last corner. Just a little bit too much greed on the uh, throttle, and that is his qualifying session over. That is absolutely devastating, yes, Din. Xerxes, unfortunately, just binning it there on the outset of the final corner. Absolutely heartbreaking from the man who... He looks so comfortable around the circuit. I was about to say, yes, Din, the man hasn't made a mistake. But it's all happened around the final corner for Xerxes. And that is a real shame. Blaze notches himself up into P1 with a sensational lap time to get himself underway. The only driver to hit the 133s here in Q2 at this early stage. The track is starting to warm up for the day. Down. Aylan on an outlap. So is Glock. Glock's on a fast lap, in fact, as Droftas lands himself into P2. Blaze, incidentally, his lap time at 133.7. Done on the medium tyres. Amazing scenes that, indeed, he's found so much pace on that compound. As Glock now also on medium tyres. Rounds the next right into the next left. The Nintendo car looking to once again spike his way up through to the top end. Yellow flag in Sector 3. Not quite sure quite what happened as we now see Glock Round the final corner. What could Team Nintendo do here? Here comes Glock across the line. And it's P1. A 133.640 on medium tyres. One and a half tenths better than Blaze. Sensational, Yestin. A brilliant laugh from Glock. That'll, uh, that, that'll do him a world of good. Someone who did struggle in his opening lap was Pillars. Someone with a 38.2 down in P9. Also want to give credit to... Uh, Chazza, who is, uh, well, he's a, four, a few seconds in front of Pillars, his teammate, but he set that lap time in the medium tyres, only two tenths off uh, Paulie Orange in the JCB. So there's some very good lap times coming in on the medium tyres. Obviously, the two with uh, Blaze and Glock uh, flying along on that. So let's see what Aylin can do on his set of mediums as he enters the last sector. Yeah, he's coming in through the chicane now, coming round towards the left-hander. This is our championship leader, of course. Uh, though if Glock keeps pulling off laps like that, I'm pretty sure it's going to be under threat. And uh, just just look at this. I mean, we've got the top three drivers as well. Going back to Aylin, Droftas and Pauli Orange, all of them are within two points of each other. You've literally got Aylin on 132, Droftas on 130, and Pauli Orange on 130. There's nothing that separates them right now bar two points. And uh, Droftas and Orange on the same points. We now see Aylan across the line. P7 for the Nintendo car. Goes quicker than Chewie. And uh, good enough for P7 at least. So currently, three Nintendo cars in the top ten. Further down, Matteo's on an outlap as well. How incredible would it be to see four Nintendo cars up in the top ten? I don't think we've quite seen that before. Have we guessed in, like, four cars in one team getting into Q3? I don't think so. We were quite close last time. Uh, obviously, Matteo picked up the... Uh... A grid penalty, but they obviously there wasn't four there, there was three. And, uh, well, it would be pretty impressive if, uh, if there was four drivers from a certain team getting into qualifying three, which would be uh, brilliant to see. And, uh, yeah, there's obviously, you could see, you would have said MTV could have had a, a good opportunity, but X uh, put it in the wall, so there goes, uh, there goes that prediction. 
And uh, it looks really good for Nintendo year today. It certainly does. I, I am Sloth is currently out on the lap as well. I think he had an invalidation on his uh, last one. And uh, apologise for us heading onto the home screen there, folks. I did accidentally drop the controller there, but managed to rescue it quite quickly. As we know, see, I am Sloth making his way down towards the next left. Matteo is also out on a lap. Infamous Pillars out on, a, on an out lap as well. So he'll be coming through on medium ties as well in the next lap or so. Uh, Matteo, in fact, is going quite slow, so obviously not happy with the lap set, maybe trying to recover some of his ERS, or maybe he's run out of fuel, as we now see Aylen coming around the next left-hander, I believe he's on a slow lap as well, Chazza is out on an out lap, incidentally, no MTV cars in the top five at this moment in time, so they're going to be heavily reliant on, on pillars to, to sort of break the deficit as such and sort of break the ice because of course they haven't yet got a man in the top five and it's going to take a lot to get close to blaze and glock's time so 133.640 and a 753 certainly very very difficult times to beat there yes well in saying that total pace is p4 he is uh he's only a tenth and a bit off uh off glock he's worth nearly a tenth and a half as slot puts himself up to p7 with a 134.5 485 just in front of our championship leader Aylan and uh, very unfortunate there. Disaster qualifying for BMW in qualifying one. And he's at the six, was in P10 briefly before Sloth beat him. If he could get himself into uh, into Q3, that'd be very good for the BMW team. But uh, Sloth managed to beat him on that lap and uh, he'll, as it stands, he'll start P11. Yeah, well, Pillar's now making his way around sector three. You can see him now. Heading up towards the next swing-in right-hander. This, of course, being turn 15 into 60. Very shortly around turn... Well, around turn 60 now into turn 17. Well, that was turn 17 to turn 18. Now turn 19. And it's amazing to see how that uh, livery actually illuminates under the floodlights here at Abu Dhabi. As they know, round the next right-hander very soon around turn 20 and turn 21. And here comes Pillars. What's he going to notch together on the medium tyres? P2 with a 133.701. And he splits Blaze and Glock. MTV enter the equation for the top placings. Sensational lap. And infamous Pillars can be pleased with that. Three MTV cars currently heading into Q3. And what a strong position that would certainly put them in. Especially after the DNF from Xerxes. Or the crash that sent him out of this qualifying session. Well... I just want to say that the, the, the top five are within a, around about a tenth and a half of each other, which is uh, phenomenal. And uh, MTV are really showing their colours now with this qualifying session. Obviously, three of them in the top ten, which is um, good for them. And obviously, all three of them are outpacing their champs lead at the moment, which is quite good. A yellow flag in sector three, but that is just for a uh, slow car getting out of the way. Of, I believe it's a, it's a BM... I'm not sure what car it was, but... Uh, I'll have to find out on that one. It was uh, Chazza, in fact, who was uh, the car driving, the uh, car getting past the car that was driving slowly. I believe it might have been one of the uh, one of the Jaguars that was uh, causing the yellow flag. But Chazza is on a lap. See what he can do as he comes across the line. Doesn't improve. He was uh, around about six six hundredths uh, off his personal best, but uh, a brilliant qualifying for MTV. Sensational qualifying for MTV, indeed. Currently, three MTV cars in the top 10 and how valuable could this be heading into q3 here in qualifying we've got three and a half minutes remaining outlap for poorly orange and the jcb team just looking further down though lpe out on a quick lap as well he's heading out on softs he's desperately looking to get that green livery into q3 now is he going to manage to get it done he certainly could be a great driver on his day certainly here at formula four hasn't had it all his own way this season he's bottom of the pile in pot three and looking for more points but he's heading slowly around the ferrari will curve and that's certainly not going to happen for him there that's not going to help uh, going slow around that bend so I've got a feeling that LPE is going to be looking to maybe set a quick lap again on his next run and Denge though the other Jaguar driver out on track on brand new fresh mediums now this man certainly has pace and can he be another medium compound driver to add another Jaguar to the top 10 of the equation heading into Q3 we'll soon find out as we now see him heading down the long stretch in between turn 10 and 11 rounding that uh, very subtle curve into the next chicane around turns 11 12 and 13 round turn 14 
14 very shortly now. Here comes Andenge. What a stunning circuit this Abu Dhabi track is and it's made even better with these very high performance cars as they come round towards the next right hander. Here comes the Jaguar of Andenge. Round the next left now. Heading soon to be. Round the next left hander again. It's going to be a very, very austatious moment here for Andenge if he can land another blow here on this classification. Here comes Andenge on the medium tyres. What can the Jaguar man lift here today as he comes up towards the line it's p7 and he makes it into the top 10 a 134.251 not great but not bad it's going to be andenge in the top 10 potentially with a q3 spot yes Tim. yep so the, the uh, two jaguar cars are, are running quite close to each other p5 and p7 and obviously you got lp no down in p12 but hopefully he can uh, join the party of the, the Jaguar and Q3 party and get himself in the top 10, which would be a, a brilliant result for Jaguar, in fairness. And if it was, if it, LP were to get himself into Q, into Q3, it would knock out Championship Leader Aylan out of this qualifying session. He's obviously out of an outlap on the soft, so he's desperate for to make sure he gets a quick enough lap, quick enough of a lap in to get himself into the final part of qualifying. Yeah, well, Chaz is retired. He must be feeling confident heading into P8. I mean, it could work out better for Chaz, though, because even if he finishes in P11, he'll get his choice of tyres at the start of the race. It's as good as being in pole position, some say, going into a race. As we now see Paulie Orange coming around the next left. He's now making his way around the next right, still to field his lap. Paulie Orange in currently in P6, looking to go quicker on fresh soft tyres. Comes across the line, he certainly will. P1, a 133.411 to be expected as Droftas trips oh. into the punch. Sensational from JCB at the last minute. The new Portonian lands a 133.358, goes over three tenths clear or just under three tenths clear of Glock. Amazing stuff from JCB. P1 and P2 in tandem, yes, Tim. Well, that's a bit quick. I have to admit, that's uh, very quick indeed from both drivers to get themselves 1-2. And, uh, well, the qualifying session's about to end now. LP improves up to P8. Out qualifying on Denge. As it stands, Aylan is out of this qualifying session. He's still got a lap time to complete. But that's phenomenal from LP to get himself in the top eight. And we could see three Jaguar cars into Q3. We could well do. But yet again, we could see... Two Nintendo cars get through. Matteo managed to pull off a sensational lap time to get himself off the bottom up into P7. So Nintendo have got a car in the top 10. Can Aylan do the same as he comes around the next right-hander? Certainly looking very confident, as he always is. Currently the championship leader, and he needs to pull off some of that championship leader pace now to get his Nintendo car up into the higher echelons on soft tyres. You'd fully expect him to do so as he comes up round the final corner. Can Aylan and get them here today. Comes up across the line and it's P3 for the Nintendo man. Goes just under a tenth of a second below Paulie Orange. P3 is enough though. Goes quicker than Glock. Great lap time. Approximately one and a half tenths of a second it's away from Glock. P3, a great lap from our championship leader. And that's two cars currently heading into Q3. As we now see I am Sloth coming across the line for MTV. He lands in a P9 and relegates Andenge. Jaguar with only what looks to be two cars going into Q3. It looked like it was going to be glory for Jaguar once again. But not this time. Energetic 6 spins his car round sector 3. And that will surely be his qualifying over. He's going to be out here of Q2. But what a sensational visit. It here jcb packing the punch land both cars on the front end of this q2 classification but aylan scrapes in at the death along with matteo nintendo with two cars heading into q3 well aylan's taken the sandbags off his car just for starters with that lap that's a uh, very competitive from our championship leader just what you expect from our championship leader and lp our qualified and edge is uh, is the big talking point of this one a brilliant lap from LP to get himself into Q3 by the expense of his teammate. I don't think Andenge will be very happy with that one, but uh, a phenomenal result for LP. Yes, not ideal at all for Andenge. I mean, of course, he is meant to be the pot two man for the Jaguar team. Of course, Total Peas is the, the, the main guy. 
in the car for the Jaguar team. P, he's currently in P5 in the Pot 1 Championship, but after his win at Belgium last week, he must certainly be feeling a lot more confident about his performances this season. But amazing to see LPE getting himself into the top 10. He must be absolutely chuffed to even make the Q3 equation. It's amazing to see. It's the great thing about Formula 4. You get to see drivers that you wouldn't necessarily expect getting into the the finer echelons of qualifying. And, and it just goes to show how unique the pot system really is, Yestin. And that is why we get to see such great moments such as this. And there's a, a very triumphant LPE in the garage there as they put the blankets on the tyres. He must be absolutely thrilled with that result. Q3 for, for the Welshman as we now look through the classifications. Droftas and Paulie Orange setting a light to the grid here for the JCB team. A 133-358 for Droftas. Paulie Orange there in P2 for JCB. Aylan just at the death snatching P3 at the end. Glock P4 Infamous Pillars P5. Blaze P6 Total P's P7 Matteo P8. I am Sloth in P9 and you've got LP then in P10. Uh, and Dench, Chazza, Chewy and the Energetic Six and Xerxes are out of qualifying but yes, we've got to talk we've got to talk about Jaguar. They've got three cars I believe. I, I believe it's three cars. I might be wrong actually. No, it's just two cars. But it looks like every team has got two cars going into Q3. So it's going to be a very equal sparring contest. Yeah, there's um, obviously that last lap from Elon sent Dan Denge packing in this qualifying session. It's only, actually, uh, it's only actually the BMW team that have only got one driver in, and that's Blaze. Yeah, so Energetic 6 was at one stage he could have gone in, but uh, he unfortunately uh, crashed in the uh, at the last corner, which uh, sent his... Uh, put his qualifying session to an end. So, so a little bit of a disadvantage for Blaze, but he's he's quick enough to get himself amongst the top amongst the quick boys into the top five, maybe even top maybe even front row. On his day he can easily get pole position if he wanted to. But uh, it's obviously an intriguing qualifying session and uh, it should be fun to see some very exciting quick laps around the Yas Marina circuit. Well, this is where it all counts, folks. We're going into Q3 now, and this is when the driver's going to put their absolute best on the line. And uh, certainly, yes, then looking back at that Q2, JCB going for a very aggressive approach with both drivers on soft tyres towards the end to try and hit their cars up at the top end. So we're going to fully expect them to really go large here in Q3 because they've simply got to, haven't they? Because they've got to make the most of those soft tyres. Yeah, they have to get themselves near the front if they want to... Uh work on that uh, soft uh, soft tire strategy as well as Elon who obviously had to go to the softs uh, with his uh, first lap not being uh, good enough for the uh, top 10 so um yeah they all they all the soft runners in the Q2 they have to push themselves to get as close to the front or even at the front obviously only one car's allowed on pole position but uh, there'll be a big scrap for it and obviously you'd want to see the likes of Glock and Pillars, who obviously are a believer on the medium tyres in Q2, and uh, they do obviously want to say, hang on, I'll just park myself on the front row for the grid for the race. Yeah, well, we'll all see now how this unfolds. It's going to be very interesting indeed. We want to hear your predictions as well, folks. So please nestle them into the chat box as well. If you have any questions, certainly for myself and Yestin, we're on hand to answer them. As we now see Blaze making his way around the final sector of this circuit, of course, getting ready to start his fast lap. And uh, BMW are going to be calling upon him to do certainly a lot of the legwork here. He's the only BMW car here in qualifying in Q3. And uh, it means that the responsibility is down to this man to ensure that they come home with some very, very good points here today. Of course, Blaze, a very trustworthy driver as he makes his way down towards turn one. And he's done BMW proud certainly this season. And uh, do expect him to be very prominent. He won two races this season at Vietnam and Monaco. Does extremely well at street circuits. So maybe he can pull off the street circuit side of Abu Dhabi to his advantage. And uh, Blaze is certainly no one to be messed about with on his day, is he, Estin? No, he is not. Like I said, he could easily get pole if he wanted to. So hopefully he can uh, put in a good lap as he goes down the uh, back straight. I'm not too sure who is the first person to set a lap. I think it would have been Pillars, but he's just having invalidation going into the last sector, which will obviously, which won't help his lap time one bit because it won't count. And uh, he'll be looking to go around again to set his uh, his lap. I believe Glock was behind him, and Glock is behind him. 
and he is in the last sector. He hasn't invalidated his lap so far. And uh, he did have a little bit of trouble in Q1, but uh, he's fixed that. And he's looking to be the first man out on track. Total Pease has retired at, I believe, the exit of... Oh, I... Uh, Struggling with the corners, but the exit of the uh, left hander going into the chicane as Glock puts down a benchmark for the rest of the field a 132.552. That is provisional pole as it stands. That is sensationally quick as Blaze now comes around the next right hander. He's going to be the, one of the next ones to nestle the lap. So is Matteo as uh, they now crib across the line. Now Matteo invalidated, but here comes Blaze P1. Oh my word! A 132.380. We were talking about him earlier on. A double race winner already and he settles Glock down into P2 after nestling a lap time that's over one and a half tenths quicker, one and three quarter tenths quicker than that of Glock. That is absolutely sensational, yes, team. BMW on top spot. Well, if a BMW Blaze gets himself on pole, I will be amazed. Because he has the pace to do it, but uh, being the sole BMW, it would be phenomenal to see. And he's wiped the floor with that qualifying lap. Nearly two tenths faster than Glock. And uh, he will be certainly happy with that opening lap. That is absolutely sensational. And I've got to say, Glock looked to be the man at the moment uh, heading into qualifying. And that 132.552 was a, a phenomenal pace. Uh, yellow flags in sector three yesterday. I'm not sure what that's quite about. Does not look um, good. L LP went for, lost the back end. He went on the curb of the penalty corner and uh, he went uh, flying into the wall and lost a chunk of his front wing, which obviously won't do him much good. And uh, hopefully he'll be able to fix that and get out for a second run near the end of the session. Yeah, well, uh, we're just seeing now Aylan coming towards the end of his fast lap as well. They're about to come around the next right-hander. Now he really needs to throw it around this final corner. It's literally only a matter of seconds before his time goes past that of those that have already been set. P4 for Aylan goes ahead of his teammate Matteo with a 133.867. Not the fastest. Uh, but still not far behind Paulie Orange. In mind as well, we've got I Am Sloth who's just nestled a P6 and uh, the rest are in the pits, but amazing scenes. We've got to talk about that moment with Blaze. He's just coming into the pit lane now and uh, in about a couple of minutes' time, they'll all be heading out ready for the start of the, the final shotgun finale to this qualifying session as we so often do here in Q3. But Blaze already in the top end with a phenomenal p1 time again i've got to talk about it yestin because that was sensational we have not seen a response like that and glock is a very difficult man to keep down yeah this is uh, very hard to beat glock in any situation and to beat them by uh well nearly two tenths it just shows how quick blaze really is and we do have a driver coming out in the so-called gap and it is lp obviously the incident in his first run so he is going to take the advantage of the clear track and head out for his last run in the in the so-called gap as they call it and uh to be interested to see what the uh, jaguar man can do yeah absolutely Aylan out on track as well plenty out and about right now and uh, let's see now Aylan make his way around the next right hander he's taking it slowly obviously just preparing the car for a, a fast lap and uh, he's going to be using it, obviously, to sort of settle the car down. LPE out on an outlap, of course, like you said, Yastin. What can LPE do? Obviously, the pressure's off him slightly because, of course, Total Pease has crashed. So he will not finish bottom of Q3. So LPE getting into Q3, if that wasn't enough, he can actually qualify at higher than P10. Uh, very Well, he already has done. So he's going to... You know, it'd be amazing to see what this man can do. A Welshman certainly with plenty of potential, and he's shown it on his day. But he's come here now. He's on an outlap on soft tyres. He's got no traffic ahead of him. So as long as it remains that way, and none of the cars come out all of a sudden as he makes his way towards the home straight, he could be in with a chance of nestling in a respectable lap time. And um, of course, we want to hear your comments in the live chat, folks, as to what your um, chat or well, what your thoughts are heading in towards the closing stages of Q3, who do you think is going to be notching themselves on top spot? Certainly, I can't imagine Glock is going to keep, want to keep this lying down. Paulie Orange is still out and about as well, but LPE in P8 currently, no lap time set, out lap on the go. Where can you see this man ending up, Yestin? Well, I'm not really too sure with LPE because uh, he, he's, not, he's not a slow driver, in, in, in fairness to him, but... Uh, 
Uh, he's not really been in the situation of being in the Q3 as he's about to come round to start this lap. Mateo's also out on that lap, out lap. But um, it should be interesting to see where LP comes. He could put in a really good lap in here. And he could be a surprise package in this qualifying session as he gets his lap time underway. Yeah, he's making his way around turn one now. We'll just follow him around for this lap of Abu Dhabi. Comes around this next left-hander. Very, very, very smart indeed. Very smooth. Coming around towards this next left-hand kink. He's got a chicane to handle. A uh, semi-chicane, should we say. And this is turns five and six. Heading around turn seven. And uh, this is, of course, the Ferrari World Corner, or the Ferrari World Hairpin, we'll call it. Heading down Sector 2. This is where the DRS will become active, and the speed trap is at the end of this straight. As he makes his way down now towards what will be Turn 8, and I'll be heading into Turn 9. You've got yourself a semi-chicane, and then you almost turn back on yourself with that instant right-hander. That, of course, being Turn 9. He swallows a lot of the curve on the inset, probably took it a little bit too heavy, and that has actually led him to slow down. So he's not happy with that lap, Yestin. And uh, that, of course, has allowed a chance for other drivers to come out on track because Matteo is out and about as well. It was a validation for LP. That's why he is uh, not driving as quick as he can. Matteo is out. He's looking. He's, he's out on the out lap, like we said. He has just been joined by a certain Poly Orange who's uh, in P3, but he's around about well nearly half a half a second off Blaze, who's obviously just come out now. As here comes the rest of the of the field Glock. And I believe that is uh, Elon, I believe that was in front of him. All coming through the tunnel now. And uh, here comes the last runs of Q3. Yeah, Matteo currently in P5. He set, set at a time. As you can now see that uh, Elon just quickly dodges out the way of him. Because, of course, Elon is out on an outlap. Doesn't want to disturb Matteo's potential fast lap time as he comes around the Ferrari World hairpin now. And uh, I've got to say, I've been really impressed with Matteo this season. Carrying on 84 points, leading the Pop 3 Championship. And uh, got to say, out-qualified Aylan in uh, Q1 as well, which is phenomenal to see. But he's just one of those constant improvers that we've really enjoyed watching as he comes in through the next chicane. And uh, as smooth as you like, which is just what you want to see in this very, very nice Nintendo livery. Certainly looking to land itself on top spot. Again, he hugs in to the tighter line, almost the tiger line, if you want to call it anything. Comes down towards the next chicane. And uh, once again, he's going to want to be quick out of here. Doesn't want to rumble over any of the lines. Don't want to end up getting an invalidation. Certainly in this late stage of qualifying, we're into the final minute. Squeaky bum time here, folks, in qualifying. Q3 coming to an end very soon. So it's now that you'll see all the cars out on track. Things are about to heat up here at Abu Dhabi. As we now see Matteo coming around the final sector now. Around the next left-hander very soon. Making his way up towards turn 20. As he comes through, breaks at the 50. Just curves his car round down towards the final corner. Around turn 21. Here comes Matteo as he comes up towards the line. What's it going to be? An improvement up to 133.969. And now, if anything, will put pressure on his teammate Aylan who does in fact who is in fact sorry in P4 and um, sensation but I am sloth is also out on an outlap plenty of cars out and about here yesterday but Matteo with a very respectful time literally a tenth of a second in behind his teammate in incredible stuff a very good lap from the pot free uh, championship leader and uh, very close to his teammate sloth just about getting his lap time in with about five seconds to spare so he's done well. The first driver to come across the line, I think, would be Pauli Orange. He just hit Sector 3 now. I think there's a yellow flag in Sector 2 because of Matteo just letting the other drivers go by on their laps. So it should be Pauli Orange, the first person to cross the line. Then I believe it will be Blaze. So it should be, should be very interesting. Yeah, well, Pauli Orange now making his way around the next right-hander, of course. He's in Sector 3 as well. Just passing the RM Co-Banners and uh, making his way around the next left-hander. Very soon, turn 20 will beckon under the next RM Co-Tunnel. Round the next right-hander under the Etihad banner. Round the final corner. What's Paulie Orange going to set here for JCB? Is it going to be P1 glory for this man? No, he's going to stay in P3 and his time is in jeopardy. Um, also out on track, we've got Droftas who comes up across the line and it's P3 for Droftas. Trumps his teammate up to P3 with a 133.2321. Blaze is still on P1, but here comes Glock now in the final sector here at Abu Dhabi. Can he knock off Blaze in the final stages of qualifying? Comes round the final corner here comes Glock across the line and he doesn't do it Blaise! 
Blaze is going to be on pole. Two and a half tenths of a second the difference. One and a half tenths of a second the difference. Blaze and BMW, the sole BMW, I am sure, will be landing himself onto P1. But as we now see, Matteo coming around the final corner. He is not going to improve. So Blaze, it's official. He is going to be your P1 sitter for the start of the race for, G for BMW. Incredible stuff, Yestin. Yeah, Blaze improved in his last run to a 33-2, uh, I believe, he said at the end. Just want to give a word of mention to the MTV drivers. Pillars third, I am Sloth, has just jumped himself into P4, right to the very death there. And uh, it's a brilliant lap for the MTV driver. And obviously, Blaze on pole, and uh, LP couldn't quite get a lap time in. And I'm not sure what's going to happen there. Will he will he start in front of his teammate or behind him? Not too sure. But that's a brilliant qualifying session. Sensational. Blaze is your pole sitter. Glock in P2. Infamous Pillars P3. But MTV, sensational stuff. Getting two drivers into P3 and P4 of the championship. Great work by both of them. And uh, certainly Pillars and Chazza can be delighted with the responses they've made, obviously, to the uh, DNFs and the uh, you know eliminations of their teammates. But amazing to see the calibre of drivers we have on this circuit. All of them have given 100%. I've got to say, Blaze had the weight of his team on his shoulders, and yet he managed to really dig out a P1 performance right at the death, putting Glock and leaving Glock in P2, one and a half tenths of a second the distance, which is quite big if you consider a man of Glock's calibre. Uh, not able to knock off someone like Blaze. And Blaze is a very feisty character, tends to do well at street circuits, as I said earlier. Has already picked up a win at Monaco and a win at Vietnam. Could Abu Dhabi suit him? That is the big question, yes, did. Certainly BMW have got all their hopes resting on that man today. Yeah, obviously uh, he's, he's he's in the pot one driver, uh, pot one championship because of his pace. And he's shown that here today. Although the rest of his team has struggled around this uh, the As Marina circuit, uh, he's he's certainly been the shining light, and he's put himself on pole, which is the best place to be. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly where you need to be. If you want to win Grand Prix, folks, that is where you need to be. You need to make sure that that one is at the top right-hand corner of your screen indeed. I've got to say, though, let's talk a little bit about Abu Dhabi, of course. This circuit, of course, being a 5.554-kilometer circuit. That's 3.451 miles, and uh, usually it'll be taken across 55 laps. We're not doing quite that much here today. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, of course, the previous race winner of that event for Mercedes. And, uh, of course, the first race here was held back in 2009. And we're here again in 2021 now, doing it on the virtual game here at Formula 4, which is great to see. The drivers are now out on their formation lap. And, of course, we will be bringing coverage back over towards the race. And I want to hear from you, Yestin. What are your predictions heading into this race? Putting me down to predict Grand Prix again, so I look extremely silly in the Discord chat, <laughs> is the way I see you're taking this one. So, but so I will predict a Grand Prix for you, and I think is the winner is between one of 20 drivers, not joking, and uh, <laughs> I, if I had, to, had to give a prediction, I will, uh, I'm going to back, I'm going to back Pillars tonight. I've got a very interesting feeling the Pillars He's gonna have a good start on those medium tyres. Obviously, they won't be as uh, won't be as uh, warmed up compared to the soft runners. But I'm, I'm gonna back pillars. Well, do you know what? You've got to give MTV a big shout out because they've got they've got pillars, and I am sloth in P3 and 4. Uh, I forgot it wasn't Chazza that actually made it up to that spot. It was I am sloth. Chazza down in P12 though. Now Chazza could be a big factor here because of course he's in P12 but he'll get his choice of tyres. Heading into the start like that, he's on the row of the grid which is pretty much if you'd consider the net front row because of course they can go on the longer stretch, have fresh tyres. They can challenge right from the get-go and of course they can carry on, maybe even pull over an overcut or something like that in the strategy and I firmly imagine that is exactly what they'll try and do. We want to hear of course your results uh, opinions of course on this um, grid order as well folks please predict your winners as well in the chat live chat as well as please leave a like and a subscribe to the formula 4 channel your support is very well well very much appreciated and we do enjoy hosting these for you every week it's a lot of fun certainly me and Yestin have a lot of fun in the comms box as well but we're now seeing the drivers line up on the grid folks and uh, we'll look forward to this one uh, amazing to see medium tyres on the front row Yestin Yes, and uh, so obviously the people that gambled on them in uh, 
in uh, Q2 are a first, second and third. And uh, the rest are on softs until you get to P's. you got LP's also on the softs. But uh, the mixture of strategies uh, from 11th onwards. So it should be a very interesting race. Certainly will. The lights are about to go over. The cars have just lined up onto the grid. And very shortly we'll be away for this Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Keep it with us, folks. It's going to be a sensational race here. Race 9 of the Formula 4 Championship. We will be underway very, very, very shortly. Just look at the multitude of cars there. Blaze on P1, Glock in P2. Both of them front row of the grid. Of course, Glock looking to get closer to the top end of the championship. Could potentially do it here if results go his way. Otherwise, Blaze can also get closer as well. Of course, already a two-time race winner here this season. And again, looking to go quicker yet again. Can he seal the deal for another P1 here at Abu Dhabi? We're still waiting for the lobby to sort itself out. Very shortly, I'm sure we will have the get-go. As, as a league racer, this is the worst time to just be sitting down, waiting for something to happen. Because it's, it's awful. I've been in the seat myself and uh, it's just not very nice. You just want the race to go into way. And uh, this is obviously very painful for everyone involved. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we can expect the first lot of drivers to pit around lap nine. That's according to the, the strategy window that just appeared down the bottom of our screens. And, uh, of course, the way things are set right now, we're not really seeing a lot of action here from the lights. So we are a bit of a delayed start here, folks. Um Hopefully this isn't going to be a terminal issue. But we will, of course, have to wait and see what happens. Of course, I'd fully expect the likes of those on the mediums at the start of the race to be able to last until around lap 13. But we're just going to have to sit tight and wait to get underway. It's worked marvellous when things like this. According to the Discord chat, the... Uh... A new lobby is being set up, so I think uh, this lobby is uh, is uh, gone. Well, yeah, and there's an error to uh, applications on the PS4, and uh, there we are. That's that's that problem solved. Well, there we are, folks. We, uh, I'm afraid, we're going to have to uh, take a short break away from the action for now, because uh, we are without. Um, we we are in fact going to be running a new lobby for this session, so not ideal at all. A real shame indeed, but uh, we will be back with the action very, very soon, so please don't go away. Uh, we will, of course, this will give us a chance, yes, to sort of go through the, uh, certainly the current crop of drivers we've got on the grid at the moment at Formula 4. Lots of prospects uh, coming through. Um, of course, we can talk about uh, the recent form of some of the teams. I mean, going back through the grid, we've had a pretty equal split in between who's won races this season. Of course, Nintendo winning the first three races of the championship with Young Stinson, who, of course, has since left the championship. Then, of course, we had Blaze winning two on the spin for BMW. Aylin came back into title-winning contention with Nintendo in race... I believe it was race five at Spain. And then Pillars, of course, up into the... P1 placings at Hungary and then of course total P's at Belgium so incidentally we're seeing a wealth of teams picking up results at the moment but the incident the really amazing thing and I say this you know with with the great degree of surprise JCB yet to win a race this season yeah they've had some very unfortunate moments uh, Orange has definitely shown his pace that he can uh, compete with the uh with the with the top with the top guys uh, up in front, someone that uh, hasn't won a race yet is Glock, and he's just sent me a PlayStation friend request. So I don't know what he wants. He might want the tip on too, <laughs> especially with uh, safety cars over the last uh, couple of races, which uh, he's uh, come in for a pit, pit stop, which cost him uh, a couple of uh, times this season. So he's just uh, sent me a friend request, which is very kind of him, and I I accepted the friend request. But uh, yeah, GCB not winning a. Uh, race obviously very strange they're normally up there as like i said with orange and uh yeah they've uh they've just haven't managed to get p1 which obviously everyone wants oh, were you really going to decline that friend request yesterday <laughs> well I, I might need some time trial tips myself so, uh, I'll have to useful it. useful contact in your back pocket there yes the useful contact indeed yeah. yeah don't blame you at all but yeah no guys i've got to say a big thank you to everyone for your patience 
um, for the start of this Grand Prix. Of course, we'll try and keep you entertained as best as we can. Uh, obviously, the, these lobby issues do happen from time to time. Unfortunately, it's something we have to deal with as, as a racing league. Certainly here, when it comes to online racing, it's something you experience more regularly than maybe you'd like. And um, I think what we'll just do, we'll take a quick refreshment break and we'll be right back with you uh, for the action indeed. So don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. We are back in the room. We're just about to get the new lobby underway. Of course, I'd like to thank every single one of you for your patience. Of course, it gave us a good opportunity for us to get a few, or well, get a water break on board. So I'm here with my glass of water and certainly going to enjoy it, that's for sure. In a Foster's glass, may I also say sponsorship as well, Foster, if there's any, if there's anything going. <laughs> but uh, yes, did lots to look forward to here at Abu Dhabi. Yeah, and I don't think having water in a Foster's uh, glass won't bring any revenue, which is a bit of a shame. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have some action in Abu Dhabi quite soon. Just uh, waiting for the uh, for the lobby to fill up. I think we're waiting on a couple of drivers, and uh, hopefully it'll be underway. Absolutely. It won't be long before we do get underway here at Formula 4. And uh, i got to say, I'm very looking forward to bringing you this very mouth-watering contest indeed I've got to say we've seen it so many times this season lots of drama spa was certainly the same i mean we, we go back to it i mean of course m many people did not tip total peas to get a race win especially after what happened to him in recent weeks with his uh, technical problems but he came back full of fire full of ferocity and managed to pull it out the bag absolutely sensational stuff and i got to say, he, he looked good value for the win. I mean, I think as well, we go back to the JCB performances and the fact they haven't won a race this season. But Droftas, on at least three occasions, in fact, on three occasions, he has actually been P2. And he's probably picked up the most podiums this season as well. Currently picked up a podium in the first race, of course, in the second race. He was P3 in the first, P P2 in the second race, P2 in the third race. Then, of course, he was P5 back in Vietnam. Following that, he was P3. Following that, he was he was actually a DNF. 
Uh, in the race at Hungary, you did pick up a P5, but after that, a P2 at Belgium. Certainly one of the more consistent performers, and you certainly expect to see him up there again today. If he didn't uh, bottle it to turn two at Spain, I think he had another podium that race as well, obviously, which would have, uh, which would have helped the championship credentials. But uh, yeah, he's definitely been one of the consistent drivers. I think you said, except for those uh, DNFs, I think every finish there was in, in the top five, which is... Uh, which from what I know is pretty good going. And uh, yeah, so hopefully he'll be up there as well as Aylan, obviously, who's a championship leader, who's obviously been consistent from the get-go. Obviously, we still got our pulse hitter, uh, Total P, uh, not Total P, he's Blaze, and uh, as well as Glock, who's joining them on the front row. So it should be uh, good to see. I mean, what a start that's going to be, Blaze and Glock. I mean, my, my prediction is, well, not my prediction, but my question is, what are we going to expect going into turn one? Is Glock going to go aggressive? Is he, is he going to look to, to snatch that P1 right from the get-go? Or is it a case of staying patient and sort of tracking Blaze for the first couple of laps, just getting settled and then get him on the straights? What do you think? This obviously depends on the uh, initial launch that the, uh, that the two get. But uh, when they might either... They, they, they could easily just play it safe, make sure... One of them, they don't hit each other going into turn one. Obviously, that help, and uh, and hopefully everyone else keeps it clean. But uh, but um, if Glock fancies it, I I'm sure he'll go for it because he is a quick driver. And once he once he gets in the lead, there's been a recurring theme over the last couple of races that he just goes does a Sebastian Vettel esque type of uh, type of lead where he just leaves the rest of the field for dead. So um, yeah, so it should be interesting to see what happens with this uh, red start. It certainly will be and uh, we'd fully expect the likes of Glock to be certainly that aggressive driver that we can that we usually would expect uh, going into a race such as this certainly with Blaze there also a race winner uh, from previous instances in Formula 4 don't expect Dim to actually lay off at all I really do expect these two to go full guns blazing down to turn 1 and turn 1 allows that as such it's, it, it may look like a sharp bend but it's actually quite a progressive bend the corner can throw the cars out so you can gradually swing yourself out on the on the outer side of the curve as you'd expect you tend to get the runoff area around the outside where of course many cars do lose it but then it's all about regathering yourself, getting yourself back on track. And then, of course, making your way through the winding section before you meet the first chicane. So it's so key, I think, at a start to get your advantage before you reach that chicane. Because that could pretty much set the tone for the start of the race. So the big question is, and the, and the race winner could be dictated by, who is the most productive at the start of the Grand Prix, Estin? Yeah, 100%. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to apologise. You might have heard... Uh... A slight burp from myself, which is uh, definitely wasn't planned. I thought it was a yawn, then I realised there was a burp coming, so I tried my best to keep as quiet as possible. But uh, apologies for that one. You've been on and, the Fosters uh, yeah. too yesterday. Well, I've been drinking water, so I don't know. <laughs> don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know something might have gone in that tap. Something in the water. It. Something's in the in water. The, in, in the house, someone must have done something this afternoon. But uh, yeah, apologies for that one. And obviously, you know, Whoever gets the best start will have a really good chance of winning this race. And uh, should be very interesting to see. Obviously, you have to remember the few cars behind are on the softs. So they could have a, a, a fantastic start on that set of tyres and get themselves in the mix. Absolutely. Well, very shortly, we will be heading out on track for the start of this race. Of course, they will have to take the formation lap again. And uh, we will watch them just make their way around the circuit, of course. We're just waiting for them to load up into the paddock. And very shortly, we'll be back live with the action at Abu Dhabi. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing what unfolds, that's for sure. But obviously, many points on the table here today and a potential swing in the constructor standings yet again because, once again, the points deficit between that of P3 and P5 is very slim yesterday. All of near enough 20 points. Amazing stuff. Amazing. Well, that's the reason we all turn up to Formula 4 every week. You're so close to the... Uh... The action is between drivers and constructors at uh, championships. There's obviously, uh, you know, anything could happen this evening. And uh, hopefully we have a bit of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you look at it now on, on paper. Uh, Jaguar, 294 points. 
BMW 285 and MTB Motorsport 271 points in fifth place, bottom of the championship. But that can all turn around in the matter of a race because there's four drivers in each team. It just simply opens the door for many options out on track. And I do believe that they are out on the formation lap. So, yes, we will finally be back to the action. And uh, i got to say, I don't think I've ever been so glad to see cars enter a circuit. Uh, I've never been so excited for a formation lap for quite a long time. This is the second one we've had now in a, in a few minutes. And, uh, well, this is uh, enjoyable action. As, uh, obviously, we can remind ourselves what the uh, what the grid looks like and uh, remember how good I am Sloth was in that qualifying free session to put himself in P4. But, uh, yeah, all the drivers trying to warm up their tyres and brakes on the formation lap. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's talk about I am Sloth because he is a pot three driver. A pot three driver, and he's found his way up into the top four places. Remember, four place, five places make up a pot. So, you know, where you'd expect five places to be, well, the top five to be the pot one drivers, you know, there's not even any pot two drivers in that top four. You know, it's three pot one drivers making up the top three, and then I'm Sloth in P4. That is sensational by I'm Sloth, isn't it? Yeah, he's been lurking around the uh, Q3 mark all season, in fairness to him. He's been around there, like near the top 10, somewhere around there. And he pulled out the P4 here tonight, which is brilliant to see for the bottom three drivers. And uh, they must have some sort of association going on, like some sort of uh, pot three association union. And they must be very happy with their dot's performance this evening. He certainly will be. He's just rounded the next left hander now. In in front of him is his teammate, Infamous Pillars. And uh, certainly there's going to be no holds barred between those two, but surely they've got sensible heads on their shoulders. I know that the MTV team are very active where it comes to their plans as a team. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't expect them to certainly be up to any mischief out on track as Blaze now makes his way up to top spot. Glock makes his way up onto the P2 spot. As you can now see him just slowly, gradually pulling up alongside Blaze. Now, you would think, based on, on the way the cars have actually got the placings on the grid, that um, Glock is in with the advantage because he'll have the inside line going into turn one, but it all depends on the getaway because if Blaze gets a good start, he can cut across and defend that inside line, yes, Din? Yes, indeed. So all the drivers are lined up and we're ready to go, I think. Hopefully, no technical difficulties. And here we are. Yeah, here we go, folks. The racing is back here at Abu Dhabi. And here we are. They're all lined up. First light, second light, third light, fourth light, the fifth light. And it's pedal to the metal. Go, 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 go. We're in Abu Dhabi and Glock gets a thunderous start and Blaze gets swallowed instantly. Oh my word, collisions contact at the start as Pillars tries to get across in front of what looks to be Blaze. They're tussling and bustling around the next right hander. In behind, I am Sloth with Sergi. certainly no Sloth characterization about himself heading through the next chicane. Still, it is Blaze and Pillars going wheel to wheel around the Ferrari world curve. But Glock has been a distance in memory, he's up in a P1, Blaze struggling with the grip, Sloth moving up in a P3, Blaze having a nightmare at the start, in behind Joftas as well, looking to really pick him off here at the early stages, but sensational stuff from Glock, he's already broken the DRS distance, yes did, what a phenomenal start. A brilliant start from Glock, like you said, he could easily pull away, Blaze on the other hand, had a bit of a disaster, as Sloth has lost out there, and he went from P3, now he's back down to P5, as Blaze overtakes him, but there's pressure from the GCB of Jostas, and he goes down the inside, and but Blaze is extremely well defend round the outside of the, uh, the uh, chicane, and he stays in P3, but that's a shocker of a start, a very good start for him from his pillars, as Bloomstar picks up the first penalty of the day. Yeah, it definitely looked like there was some aggro there going into turn one. The the got to say the MTV cars were really just they just wanted to fly up through the grid placings and they were there just hustling, bustling with the um, sole BMW car in the top ten. And of course, the other three down in the bottom ten all shot down and Energetic Six in P13, 12 and P13, and uh, Blaze now getting back up into P3 after well, really sort of. Uh, cl well, clashing with Drofdas, you know, battling down the straight. There's the pit stop strategy, folks. Lap 10 to 18 is expected for the mediums, the softs, 
are probably going to die off a little bit quicker. I'd firmly expect them to die off in the first eight laps, so do not be surprised to see some early pit stops, as we're now seeing activity out on track. Paulie Orange trying to let fly at and Dend right now as they head through the next chicane. JCB not getting the most glamorous of starts themselves. Paulie Orange right down the back end of the field. He did not enjoy that getaway. Further up, Aylan, currently seven tenths of a second behind Total P's, who's right on the rear of Sloth now, who's got a very different battle on his hands. Remember, he started P4. He is now now in jeopardy as they come down towards the next chicane. He has got total peas right in his grill, yes, Tim. Yeah, that front wing will be right on the gearbox of the MTB car as they head down, or, or, uh, they head into the uh, the second back straight. DRS not activated yet, but I think you'll need it for the for the Jaguar around the outside, going into the chicane, into, into the chicane, and he gets the move done and up in, into P5. Obviously. A bit of a disappointment in Q3 of that mistake that uh, cost him of a chance of setting a lap time, but he's up to P5 very early on. Yeah, and I've got to say, Droftas as well, really trying to tackle that of Blaze, who has had a very difficult start indeed. He pretty much got swallowed up. He just could not get the getaway that he was looking for. And Glock, as we did predict earlier on, he was going to go for that inside line and take it as quickly as possible off the start. He took advantage and managed to slip up the inside. He really did manage to get it, uh, get it done indeed. And that has sent him into P1 in behind as well. He's already managed to set a gap of 1.6 seconds in front of Infamous Pillars. He is absolutely flying right now which is absolutely incredible to see uh, you can see Chewie's trying to make his way up through the field but Aylan currently three tenths of a second behind I am Sloth and Sloth is starting to drop back Yestin yeah I can confirm that I did not send Glock a message or anything like that before this Grand Prix I can confirm just in case any of you doubters think that uh, I've done something to fix this Grand Prix I can confirm I have not Sloth on these uh, on the softs, a brilliant getaway, but uh, we might see the early effects of the uh, of the soft tyres going already. Obviously, Aylan behind, who is uh, our championship leader on the same set of tyres, with Andenge, who started outside the top 10 in P11, I believe. He's up into eight. Hopefully, he'll be able to catch up to the two cars in front quite quickly. Well, Blaze is on a mission as well, and he's actually managed to catch up on the deficit that he was lacking behind Infamous Pillars, who's currently in P2. He actually stole the P2 position off him, uh, heading round to one. Glock pretty much had that P1 home and host before the corner, uh, which was since lane to see. We did talk about getting a good start here at this track was absolutely vital in order to gather your place positions. And Pillars is actually dropping back even more from Glock. Two tenths of a second since we last analysed it. And uh, he is now back 1.9 seconds. Now that gap is going out to nearly two seconds. Glock is on a mission. And uh, Blaze coming around the next right-hander. Of course, this is down the home straight. This is the commence lap four of 28. And uh, Blaze heading in towards turn one. He is still six tenths of a second behind Infamous Pillars, but they're on the same tyre strategy. And in behind as well, Droftas on softs, looking to get as close as he can as well. But he's got a lot of work to do, and those softs are going to die off quite quickly. Yeah, the JCB of Droftas needs to get in front of these two, preferably. He needs to get himself into the lead and pull away as much as he can, but I don't think that will be happening with the pace of the uh, top three cars. But he needs to get himself at least in front of Blaze as Bloom Stars, our first retirement of the, of the Grand Prix, I believe. So the exit of turn three going down into turn four. And it might be maybe a little bit later on than that, actually. And uh, I be I, I'm not too sure if there's a safety car or something that has been called because there's no uh, no notification on my screen but the track map is lit up in yellow so I'm not too sure on that one yeah we're not quite sure if it's a VSC folks but the yellow flags have been waved by the stewards we've seen the safety car notifications coming up on the side of the circuit but no notification to suggest that there is a safety car or a VSC by the looks of it there is a safety car as far as I as far as I can see I mean, it's all lit up, suggesting that there is a safety car. But I'm just waiting to see if we're actually going to see the Mercedes out on track. I I can see a yellow dot just before sector two. So that might indicate something that the safety car is out early on in this uh, in this Grand Prix. Yeah, the uh, the uh, sign there at the uh, before the penultimate corner with the uh, with the initials. The safety car is out and. Uh, Glock stays out, so the leaders are just staying out, hoping the uh, 
the mediums do them wonders, but I expect the soft runners to come into the pit. Well, that's what Aylan is doing. Yeah, you're spot on, because Droftas has as well. So they're all going to come in now, and you have to wonder whether they might go for the hard options. Uh, no, they're going for the mediums. Dan, or oh, Droftas is certainly going for the, the medium tire, tires as well as Paulie Orange. Loads of them coming in now taking advantage of the current situation surrounding the safety car. I am Sloth is staying out. And um, i got to say, that must be really hurting Glock right now because, of course, we've known about his previous um, experiences with safety cars. They haven't really stood him in good stead historically. And again, he has suffered or paid the price here because that deficit that he managed to march out on pillars, that, of course, being approximately two seconds of delta gap, has now been taken away from him. He's now down to three tenths of a second, and I'm sure it'll get tighter as the safety car makes its way around this chicane. So all the hard work that Glock had put into place has now been wiped away from the Nintendo car. Not ideal at all, Yestin. Yeah, I think Glock will be the first to get a position up and run into uh, to ban safety cars in all leagues, uh, but I don't think that will uh, gather any momentum. So I don't think that will happen, but... Uh, Many times this season we've seen Glock pull out a lead and the safety cars come to cut it. Obviously frustrating for the race lead there, but excitement for us as uh, the entire field should be bunching up not in uh, the not too distant future. No, absolutely. And uh, what this does mean as well is that this potentially we've got another uh, race start on our hands and uh, we're going to be really patient just to see what happens um, and just see how they respond to the restart because of course we've seen some drama in previous encounters with the safety car and uh, I've got to say Belgium uh, was certainly one of them I mean that was absolutely sensational uh, the amount of safety cars we had in that race and of course this is the first one of the session and um, Glock at this moment in time of course I can't imagine the race will be decided at this point but of course it could certainly bode um, a different, um, a, but certainly bode a different storyline, sort of swing this race into a whole different set of affairs. Uh, as you can see, that all of the drivers in the bottom half of the table, well, most of them for that matter, have already boxed. Chazza is on hard, and uh, you've got further up the likes of Droftas, Aylan, Paulie Orange, Matteo, iStreams, Paul Watson, Xerxes, LP, all on medium tyres now. So all of them are on fresh tyres. We'll have to see how this affects their race uh, when the restart gets underway. I can only assume that it's going to be coming in at the end of this lap, Yestin. But what does Glock have to do now? Because surely he's got to try and kick on again and try and increase that deficit because Pillars is going to be hunting all over the back of him here. Yeah, he just needs to do what he did to the first start, the original race start, and just pull away. Like you said earlier with the... Uh and there were the drivers in the top 10. Obviously, BMW didn't have a great Q1. Now, as things stand, there's four, four BMW drivers in the top 10, which is uh, fascinating to see. Obviously, I don't think it will end like that, even though if it would, it would be pretty spectacular. But, uh, yeah, there's four of them in the, in the top 10. Well, it would be sensational for BMW. I mean, what a turnaround after a very, very difficult qualifying session to see them potentially coming home with some great points here today. We'll have to see how that works out. Glock, you can see, very aggressively warming up his tyres uh, heading down the stretch behind the safety car. You can see Blaze and Pillars doing exactly the same. Uh, you want to make sure your tyres are at optimal temperature as well as the brakes. And uh, as they make their way up towards the next chicane heading into Sector 3, no notification just yet as to whether the safety car's coming in, but we will keep you posted as to what is going to happen. I mean, we didn't get a we didn't get a notification that it was coming out in the first place, did we, did we Yestin, to be quite frank? Yeah, nothing came up. We had to rely on the good old uh, the black screens that we see in uh, real life come up on the game to tell us that the safety car was uh, coming out, but uh, Glock has uh, slowed everyone up, so it looks like we will be returning to race in action. Yeah, it looks that way indeed. Glock just being patient, just priming his car ready for the restart. Of course, these restarts are so important, so key 
into delivering an extended performance from your tyres and your car. So you really need to ensure they're at optimal temperature. And you can see that all the cars behind Glock right now are trying to warm it up. Just look at the contingent behind. Just look at the BMW car just littered in blue as Glock hammers home now and gets them back underway. And a sluggish start indeed by Blaze, who was not ready for that. Seems to be struggling with the starts right now. All shot down. Has retired from the session. We've lost all shot down as well. Two cars out the race. And that is a BMW car out as well. They're down to three. And uh, as we now make our way round the restart now, it's still Glock in P1, Pillars in P2, Blaze in P3, but he gets a penalty, and P's in P4, yes, Tim. Yeah, so um, All Shot Down lost it at the restart, which is a, a big disappointment for the, uh, the, uh, the BMW car, as they've lost already one of those uh, four drivers that I mentioned earlier on. Matteo has overtaken Ayland, but that is uh, Ramsell, in fact, who's just the... A slight loss of the back end, the back end. Uh, he's kept his car in one piece, but he's going to lose a handful of positions. He's already down into P11 behind Pauli Orange, but uh, that won't give the uh, BMW boys much confidence uh, at this restart. No, it certainly won't, and this could be a real turnaround because, of course, you've got the uh, Nintendo cars all priming on the rear end of Ramsell, and this could see. The current state of affairs could see the Nintendo cars all heading into the top 10, but we'll have to wait and see. In behind Iron Sloth is chasing Andenge. They're going wheel to wheel around the left-hander, and Andenge just gets, well, a little bit of contact between the two of them, and Andenge streaks clear. Of course, Iron Sloth had to be careful, did not want to spin the car, and luckily enough, he came off relatively unscathed. He certainly seems to be battling heavily with a lot of the drivers out on track, but Andenge holds on to P5 and joins his teammate P's up into the top five placings. This means now we see Droftas now making his way through past Chewy and so's Pauly Orange as they come around towards the final corner and indeed as they do so, still in tandem and Pauly Orange seals the deal like Evander Holyfield and Chewy is down to P10. The two JCB cars back into the top 10 of the classifications on fresh mediums. This will certainly go their way. Yeah, the two JCBs will be very happy with themselves with that overtake. They both have got uh go past the Nintendo Chewy very well indeed right there and uh, Aylan has pitted with ice streams as well and they both change in a, a front wing so we might have missed an incident there between our oh, championship leader and ice streams and uh, that will be a big blow for Nintendo with Aylan down in P17 and a long way way behind uh, LP meanwhile Energetic 6 has just lost the position to Doftas as the JCB car moves up into P Seven with the BMW down in the P8 with Paulie Orange all up behind him. Uh, we yeah. haven't got DRS yet again as uh, we've had a safety car. Obviously, it takes a couple of laps for that to come back in. But can Paulie Orange get the move done down the inside? No, he can't. You know, we got a double move here because Chazza now making a move on Paul Watson coming into the next chicane and he comes alongside and snatches P13. A great move indeed by the MTV car. He is now on the back of BMW's Ramsell who is currently in P12. A shaky exit there from Ramsell. Can Chazza seal a move into the inside there? Ramsell has to go defensive. Can he hold on? Oh my word. Another move there and he gets moved off. Oh Ramsell. Ramsell nearly into the wall. He just re-enters the track and nearly catches the Jaguar. Very close here and I've got to say that could have been really traumatic oh my word oh my word a calamity there for Paul Watson and he loses it there we have lost Chazza as well from the session whether that's a disconnection I'm not quite sure but I've got to say scenes here at Abu Dhabi and certainly the instance on this track I think a lot of people are struggling with it and I think we've got another VSC maybe another safety car I haven't been prompted here yesterday uh, it might be, it might have been a VSC. I'm not quite sure. I believe it's a VSC because there's no uh, safety car out as Ramsell retires. Big disappointment for Paul Watson. He just lost it at the exit of the uh, left hand. It's so easy to do that from uh, past league racing experiences. It's very easy to lose the back end there on that curb because you're wary of the wall next to it, but uh, you forget them about the traction there. And uh, well, we've lost Ramsell as well, so it's all going badly. For BMW, there's only two drivers left now, and uh, yeah, it's not looking good as the VSC has ended, and we are back to uh, green flag racing now, and uh, hopefully, there'll be less of the uh, less of the uh, crashing.
Absolutely. Well, yeah, just the way things stand right now. Blaze is gunning all over the back of Infamous Pillars. These two were battling at the get-go of this Grand Prix. And, of course, Glock, who was um, away by two seconds prior to the safety car, has got Infamous Pillars hunting all over the rear end of that Nintendo car right now as they come around the next right-hander. We've yet to hit lap 10, but we will do shortly because Pillars and Glock about to come around the final corner with blazing hot pursuits. Total Peas has entered the fray as well, but bear in mind, Peas 3, 4, and 5 have got penalties and the strategy is opened up for the two-stop. And no doubt we'll start to see a lot of the guys in the top five look to come into the pits here. Yeah, obviously a few of them are, are on the medium, so obviously that will uh, ruin that one. I think it's for the uh, soft runners, I believe, that uh, strategy was for. Obviously, there's been a few drivers who have pitted under the uh, opening safety car that we had, but it's all getting closer from, uh, well, you could arguably say, the race lead down to uh, P's and P4. They're all squabbling around, and it should be fun to watch. Well, how about this one? Droftas on the back of I Am Sloth, and this should be academic here for Droftas as he makes his way on the outside line of I Am Sloth. Can he get it done? Going into the next semi chicane on the left-hand side. Goes around the left-hander, and he's already beaten before the corner. Scintillating stuff there from Droftas, and Paulie Orange be looking to do the same now. DRS becomes active, but Sloth has got DRS on Droftas, but he's already marched out of five-tenths of a second advantage. Blaze still hunting on total peas, and uh, after that, I think there must have been a mix around because peas is in P3. He's managed to march his way ahead of Blaze, and he's now hunting after Glock. Sensational stuff at the top end, and Glock has lost out to Pillars. So we've seen a right dramatic twist at the top end. Infamous Pillars is your race leader, folks. Yeah, so we had uh, two overtakes going into the going into the sector split, going into the chicane. At sector three, pillars went down the around the outside of Glock, and uh, P's uh, launched one down the inside of Blaze, and both got the move done. So um, a very good move for Pillars there as he takes the lead of this Grand Prix. He certainly does. And Pillars is flying. He's already marched out seven tenths of a second near enough on Glock as things stand. In behind Total P's, four tenths of a second off Glock. And uh, it just goes to show, I think these tyres are starting to take a little bit of a pounding now. And you'd firmly expect a lot of these drivers to maybe look to maybe pit onto either the hard tyre strategy or maybe even go for the soft, the double soft strategy. But it makes zero sense to do that. You don't want to lose all your time. Uh, remember, Total Peas has got a time penalty. Glock, with that straight line speed, getting closer and closer to the back of Infamous Pillars, trying to make use of the, the straight line on that Nintendo car as they come through the next chicane. I think Blaze sl slightly overshot the corner heading into the semi chicane but you can now see glock already gaining back the time that he lost on pillars is he gonna go for a late move down towards the next chicane indeed he has a look but nothing there as pillars manages to hold on to that place but glock is looking menacing yesterday yeah obviously he'd be looking to get uh, back in front after losing the uh, race lead but uh Pease is uh slightly caught up a little bit here going into the uh, last sector and uh, could easily put a lot of pressure on the Nintendo, and he was talking about the medium tyre runners uh, starting to struggle. What about Sloth? He's somehow started on those softs, and they're still going strong. He's all, might have dropped down to P8, but uh, he's still going at it on those softs. Yeah, well, uh, Pease uh, is looking absolutely swamping at the moment. And in the pits comes Blaze. He's the first to choke. Let's see if the early stop is enough. He's going to try and go for the undercut, I believe. Uh, so we're going to try and get it done in the pit lane. We'll see how much time he garners because, of course, it could make a difference depending on what happens in terms of P's and Glock and Pillars. We have to see how they pit. Of course, the battle still rages on. So while these three are fighting out on track, it's a very, very good move indeed by Blaze because they won't be able to... Certainly, if they're still battling, they're going to be losing a lot of time to each other if they're going to be making their way around the corners. So certainly, it's going to help his cause coming out, getting an early pit stop in, maybe ga ga well, garnering some extra time and uh, potentially 
undercutting a lot of the drivers at the top end. We'll have to see how that pays off for him as they enter the next chicane. And still Pillars is in front. And Pease is now all over the back of Glock. So Glock is in real jeopardy here. The DRS has become open for both drivers. But Glock is so far away from Pillars. But he's garnered a lot of that straight line speed. There's so much pace in that Nintendo car. And you can just see how late Pease is breaking. Because he can afford to do that. The differential on the brakes must be thus so. So he can actually enforce a late break and be more effective into the corner. So you've got two very different styles here, folks. You've got Glock, who's maximizing the straight line speed by the looks of it, and Total P's making use of the corners, Yestin. Meanwhile, back down in P7, Matteo and Sloth are going at it as a, as a energetic six is a bit of a moment there. And uh, Matteo just loses out to Sloth, who's still out there on those softs. Surely he's got to come into the pits sooner rather than later because those softs must be crying to get off this car and a new set of tyres must be needed on the MTV car. Well, it's butchering his Delta times, that's for sure. We got Blaze as well all over the back of LPE. Now, remember, Blaze has already pitted and uh, he is on fresh soft tyres, so potentially going for another stop as well after this as he makes his way around the stretch. He's going to have to make the most of this compound now while he has the chance. Comes down towards turn one. Is he going to get the entrance here? Goes in for a move on the outside here of LPE. Very, very nip and tuck between these two, but gets it done. He enters back on track in front of the Jaguar car into P9. So he's into the top 10 proper. He's got his teammate, Ville Energetic 6, in P8 ahead of him now, but the delta d uh, gap is currently three seconds the difference at this moment in time so still a little bit of work to do but further up of course we can rejoin the battle of the lead because total peas once again swamp in the rear end of glock though we did lose a little bit of time heading out of that chicane as they make their way down towards the next left hander these three have been pretty much in a drs train now for the last 10 laps at least obviously since the safety car we had originally and uh, it's been very fascinating to see this battle happen on track uh, of course glock seems to be quite happy just sort of just Leaving himself behind pillars, just tracking that MTV car, waiting to see who blinks first for a pit stop. Because all three of them have reached that point in the race where pit stops are to be considered. But I'd imagine they want to get a few laps on these tyres first, maybe stretch it to lap 15 before maybe making a stop onto the softs here, Yestin. Yeah, so hopefully they'll be able to stretch these mediums as long as they can, then box three set of softs. The safety car earlier in the race did help that decision but uh, obviously they might actually might have to go for the uh, for the two stop meanwhile blaze has overtaken his bmw teammate energetic six and behind him L uh, lp lost the back end of the same corner as paul watson did earlier on and he is out of the grand prix and there's a safety car deployed i believe that is the safety car about to come out to the pits now and uh, wait for the race leader so a second one we've had today and maybe a good opportunity for the leaders to come into the pits. It certainly is, and uh, could have timed it better, really, if you think about it. All, all saying that, they're in, they're in sector two at the moment. Uh, Chazza has rejoined his car, so he's back in the race. Of course, he would have probably lost a lot of time, considering that his AI would have taken over the car. But he's back in the seat, and uh, he's in P10. But the safety car will certainly help him, uh, because he'll be able to rejoin while the cars are being bunched up yet again. Of course, we can fully expect the likes of the top end pitting now onto their new compound of tyres. And uh, it would be interesting to see in this safety car restart where Blaze comes out. Because, of course, he's on the fresh soft tyres. And this is music to Blaze ears here. Because, of course, he can try and get ahead of Pillars, Glock and Pease under the safety car. Because if they go into the pit and Blaze times this perfectly. Because, of course, he's not too far away from the top three. He can, he can very easily snatch the net lead of this race as things stand. So this, this is going to be very interesting. We'll have to keep an eye on Blaze as things goes on because this could help him elongate the use of his tyres, Yestin. Yes, obviously the safety car obviously uh, doesn't race at racing speed because uh, these Formula 1 cars are so quick that the safety car just wouldn't keep up. And it would be very dangerous that uh, the safety car would race. As the top three all come into the pits for a change of tyres. So it'll be interesting to see what they go on. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on we'll have to keep an eye on Blaze as well, yes, then. In comes Matteo. So Blaze coming in as well. Blaze is coming in as well. Now that's interesting. I did not expect that. Very interesting indeed, but I can see the sense in it. He can go on a fresh pair of mediums, effectively land himself on the same tyre as those in the top end. 
Um, albeit, though, actually saying that, no, they're going to go for fresh softs at the top end, aren't they, of course? Because they're going to be changing onto a different compound. But because Blazer's already pitted, he can get back onto a set of medium tyres. So he will have, I suppose his way of thinking, his tyres will be better approximately around eight laps of their usage. So do not be surprised if Blaze is going to finish quick. That could be a genius move by the BMW. So let's see if it works out for him. He gambled. I mean, he could have stayed out and taken the lead of the race. But he's chosen to come in, he's being cautious, and he's trying to map himself a result. So going on those medium tyres could easily mean that he's going to be challenging at the end. But look who's ahead of him. He's got Matteo, Pauli Orange, Drofdas, and Endenj all on the same strategy. Yeah, so uh, it's not just Blaze doing the uh, doing the medium stop, doing the safety car strategy. There's obviously Endenj as well, who's put himself in P4. He's obviously got the three soft runners in front of him. Who will be conserving their tyres later on in the race? So he's in, he's in pole position for the, when the tyres go off as it stands. But uh, Blaze will have to do some overtaking to do before he reaches the top three. So it's currently Andenge in the Jaguar, as it stands, who would uh, technically be in the lead of the medium runners. He certainly will be, and um, and Denge in a very good position indeed. Now, if he can hug Glock, I mean, of course, Glock in the pit stop lost his place to Pease as well. So Pease up into P2, and he's almost skulking his way to the top end. Now, Glock's got a penalty as well. So the top, th the, well, at least three of the top four have got penalties. Pillars currently leading this race, even in amongst the safety car, is still leading this Grand Prix, despite... Uh, obviously the pit stops that have been made during the safety car run and he is clear well by a considerable margin if you take into account the um the, the, the actual points that have been accrued certainly the um that, that is not going to help certainly the drivers Pease, glock and andenge certainly the um you know being penalized that way with the penalties is not going to help them achieve a result that they're looking for here today and that's going to really upset jaguar's race because andenge and total peace of course both representing team jaguar both in the top four both have penalties which is not going to be ideal at all so pillars you could say in pole position to win this grand prix yeah and uh i've just solved the issue of the uh of the non-flag pop-up that we've uh both experienced so far in this race that the uh, I just quickly paused the menu to see what penalty uh, Glock had and uh, I checked the race director, came back and I can see safety car on my screen which is a delight, I haven't seen it for 16 laps I know I've got it, I feel very privileged to have it back on my screen so I'm now very happy Well a, a quick pause for me as well has actually landed me the safety car visual as well so we have got the HUDs back on our screen, folks. Great to have them back. Certainly a commentator's dream, that's for sure, as uh, we're now seeing this contingent of cars. We're going to have a really, really, well, real roller coaster finish to this Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Now, it's very, very seldom seen at Abu Dhabi to have a race like this, folks, because obviously we saw it at Spa. Now, this is almost like Spa Part 2, Yestin, because remember, we had those safety cars previously. Now, Glock, um, we've already seen his comments in the in the chat saying screwed over again held in the pit he is not enjoying these safety cars whatsoever not to mention he has got a penalty so this has not gone the way of glock once again and effectively the race has been handed on a silver plate to infamous pillars mtv could come home with some very valuable points here today well in saying that pillars did get the move done on glock in the pit uh, out on track in in battle and uh, yeah, so Glock, a uh, third race, no way a third race where Glock has uh, been in the lead and the safety car has cost him a potential race win. If that happens again, then I will be absolutely gutted for him. But uh, obviously, if you held up in the pits, it's very unfortunate in this game. But uh, it's the way how uh, Formula One goes nowadays. And uh, well, with the uh, pillars is uh, pulling away for it. Lost a lot of time to the safety car then, but there's nothing come up on my screen saying you're back in the way. Well, if you want to talk about being held in the pits, you want to speak to George Russell about that. That effectively is what caused him to lose his Bahrain GP as the restart now 
I believe, is about to get underway because Pillars has thrown the hammer down and here they go again for the restart of this Grand Prix. The safety car peeling into the pit lane and Pillars is leading the way down into turn one and indeed leads the contingent of cars around this very first sector. As you can now see, Total P's in P2 just clocking every move that uh, infamous Pillars makes in behind as well. Glock looking to track these two as well in behind him. We have Andenge who did not get the best of getaways, currently landing himself seven tenths of a second in behind but P's is really starting to lay the hammer down and knows that he has got a time penalty so he needs to dispatch infamous pillars ASAP of course both of them on a similar stretch of tyres he runs over the DRS line and of course very shortly coming down towards the back end of the main straight uh, or of course the long straight indeed as they now start making moves in behind we're starting to see Blaze just whittling his way on the outside just having a look on the outside of Matteo who is still ahead of his teammate Aylin incidentally two, three Nintendo cars in the top 10 with Chewie in P13 as well so Nintendo could once again be looking at some serious major points again and certainly have been the most consistent team as we're now seeing Blaze now once again clocking Matteo and I've got to say a very late break indeed and already has seen him really march his way up through towards the rear end of that Nintendo car and Blaze looks absolutely menacing here Yastin yeah he's really eager to get himself uh, a few more places in this Grand Prix as uh, Paulie Orange and Matteo both lock up into that uh, right hand desk and the current theme uh, here tonight and uh, Aylan who's down in P10 we haven't spoken about him much this evening our charity leader but uh, yeah it's just been a great one for him as uh, Chewy has unfortunately left the session, that might be a disconnect, which will be a shame for him. Meanwhile, Pillars has uh, extended his lead to around about seven tenths now. That will make him feel very comfortable up in front. Yeah, we're just watching now Blaze make his way through Sector 1, of course, and uh, he's really trying to make a charge here on Matteo. And, uh, of course, the pace beyond this BMW is so scintillating as they come through the chicane now. And uh, he has got a lot to be concerned about, has Matteo, because Blaze is very quick and he's throwing this car around every corner and hitting every apex despite this. And uh, as he makes his way across the line, of course, to obviously I, I would imagine the DRS will become uh, back again very shortly, but he might not need it here as he uses the DRS to sort of bomb down the outside there on Matteo or on the inside chase and gets the move done before he even reaches the corner again. That's the third time we've seen that in this race. Amazing stuff there from the BMW car and Blaze is up into P7. He did look like he was on top spot to actually win this race here today, but uh, he gets a move done on Matteo nonetheless. So a phenomenal move, P7 for the BMW man. Yeah, just what he wanted. Now he's got two JCP cars to negotiate before Richard and Denge and a possibility of a podium. Meanwhile, Pease has closed the gap to Pillars a little bit. This could get very tasty next lap around with the uh, Jaguar looking to pick up the lead. Pillars has picked up a penalty himself, so that any move here would be for result as things stand. Well, that's music to the ears of Total P's, Glock and Andenge as well. So it means it's opened the door to all of them to compete for the league, well, for, certainly for this Formula 4 Abu Dhabi GP race win uh, as they now come around the next left hander now through the next right. This very initial sector, very quick, uh, very stabby when it comes to the corners. Uh, certainly you've got to be very careful when executing your way certainly around this chicane as well it can really throw you out as Pillars really marching on now trying to keep the pace pretty level he's got Total P still behind him here obviously the penalty is not going to help and uh, a lot of pressure they've got to keep an eye though because Droftas is not far away either and uh, he has not got a penalty himself and uh, obviously any penalties can make a huge difference certainly here in the context of Formula 4 as we're now seeing Total P's come up through, nearly really knocking the rear end of Pillars. And uh, Pillars got a better exit there out of the chicane, heading round past the DRS uh, post. As we now see them, the DRS has become active again. And uh, Total P's can now start to use it to his advantage, try and close the gap on infamous Pillars and potentially drag the likes of Glock with him here, as well as Andenge, as they march their way through the next sector into Sector 3 now. And uh, as they make their way around towards the next right-hander, of course, this race is starting to really hot up here, folks. And uh, certainly with all these cars now on an even playing field in the top four, it's going to be a real spicy affair, Yestin. And uh, Blaze has gone down the inside of Paulie Orange here into the right-hander, an unusual pace to overtake, but he looks like he's going to get the move done with the outside line here. And he has up in the P6, so he's got past one with the GCPs here. And this is very good for Blaze. If he wants any chance of a podium, this is his time. 
It is, absolutely. And Paulie Orange is going to want to win that back if he can. But already the deficit has been marched out by half a second. So you can imagine that Blaze is finding extraordinary pace on his mediums. Incidentally, both of them on the same tyre. But Blaze, obviously, that little bit quicker. And he's trying to really try and regather himself and march on Droftas if he can. Uh, of course, Droftas still in with the chance, though. Because remember, he's still got penalties. And this could be key at the end of this race. I know I keep talking about it, but it's so vital. Because if you can stay within the delta gaps... You know, Droftas himself right now could very easily wind himself up into the higher echelons of the table. But we'll have to find out at the end of the race to see whether that will come into fruition at this moment in time. It looks like he's dropping pace off and end right now. And Blaze is starting to gather it. He's nearly within the second delta gap. Paulie Orange as well throwing himself into the mix with the DRS as we're now seeing them march their way through the next chicane. And Blaze, if anything, could be in jeopardy here as they come round. Also in jeopardy is infamous pillars because Total Peas is really starting to march on now. Glock is being patient in behind maybe serving his tyres for a last gasp towards the rear end of this race but as you can now see them march their way through sector 3, the battle is heating up the battles across the track are heating up lots of opportunities for overtakes and I, I'd imagine we've got an abundance coming through as we reach the final 8 laps of this Abu Dhabi Grand Prix Yeah, so the, the scraps down here is a sloth who got himself up in the P8, then there's a, a switch of drivers between the Nintendo between Aileen and Matteo so Aylin's now having a, having a look at the uh, MTV car and obviously the Blaze battle like we've just mentioned. Meanwhile, Chaz uh, and Energetic 6 were quite close moments ago, but that's kind of petered out and they're uh, quite uh, separated again. But uh, not much else to report. And uh, hopefully this close racing can continue right up until the very end. But it seems to me a gap is starting to form between that of Andenge and Glock. But remember, Andenge is on the medium tyres. So the top four, or the top three, should I say, on softs. I mean, if Andenge can unlock the potential of those mediums towards the end of this race, it could be crucial. Droftas as well uh, in pre under pressure here from Blaze because he's managed to get it within the DRS gap. And uh, I imagine now that Droftas will literally... Gonna have, he's going to have to defend for his life here. Uh, despite the fact they're both on medium tyres... So at the end of the day, it's Blaze's opportunity here. If he can get it done, he's got the DRS, that's for sure. And he's going to try and close the gap. He's pulling Paulie Orange along with him as well. Aylin getting a move done on I Am Sloth to move up into P8. As we now see them rise up through the next chicane. Still, Droftas holding on to that P5 place. But Blaze has managed to half the, t the 8 tenth deficit. Down to near enough 4 and a half tenths of a second. Here he comes now, round sector 3. And that JCB is in real Real view now. You can see it right in front of the BMW car. Look how close he is. A little messy out of that corner is Droftas. Maybe struggling with the grip here, Yestin, on those medium tyres. It seems to be missing a few apexes. The pressure, the hammer, free and brought down by Blaze as they come round through the next few corners. And indeed, this could be the very opportunity that Blaze spots that can march him up into the higher ends of this classification, Yestin. Yeah, so maybe the mediums aren't cooking for the JCVs. But they definitely are for Blaze here tonight at the Asperina circuit. Can the BMW get himself in front? Meanwhile, Pease has closed the gap a little bit to around about half a second. The top three were within a second of each other then briefly, but that's opened up a bit now. Pillars having a really good exit there from the hairpin. But can Blaze find any sort of move? He's obviously going to have a DRS and he has a little bit of ARS as well. As they go down the back straight, DRS is now open. Can he get a move? Was he too far behind to make a move? Well, he might get one done here out of the chicane. He's still got another DRS line to take just, you know, just now. He's literally just got to march his way through this next chicane. Just easily and smoothly does it. He's managed to find a bit of time to drop. That's a bit shaky. Exiting that chicane, but he's got the DRS again. Can he use it to his advantage before they reach the chicane? I don't think he will. It might be another lap in behind that of the JCB car, at least for now, for Blaze. As they come up through the next chicane now into Sector 3 proper, and Droftas is going to be under a lot of pressure now from this man in the BMW. Of course, Blaze looking ever menacing again. And uh, this is the kind of form we've come to expect from this man, of course. Double race winner, as, we, as we've already discussed. And he's already haunting the rear end of that JCB car. Droftas has only got to look through his rearview mirror to see a big blaze of blue just striking in behind him here as Blaze now looking to march on. Can he get something done here into the home stretch? There's a good chance he could do if he could just hug the rear end of that JCB as they make their way round now. The panic on the right-hand side. Still it remains in lap 23 of 28. Droftas in P5, Blaze in P6, the battle rages on. 
Meanwhile, out in front, Pease managed to get in front of Pillars, going down into the chicane, so we've had a move for the race lead as the Jaguar of Pease is now out in front. Obviously, penalties don't really affect the top four now as they're all suffering from them. But uh, And Droftas is uh, well out of the uh, window now, so any chance of a win. But Pease leads, and he looks like he's keeping a solid gap out in front as well. Yeah, not only that, Glock is marching on the back of Pillars as well. So Glock waiting to pounce. And I do get the feeling that Glock maybe is saving slightly. This is not the Glock that we're used to seeing. Usually he makes the most of the straight line speed. He's now choosing to pick his moments. And there might come a time where he looks to activate. Just look at his overtake button. He has got it on. So he is trying to push on Pillars now. And goes for a late move on the inside. There of infamous Pillars. And oh my word, there is contact. Rear wheel to front wheel of contact there between Glock and of course dropped us as well being tackled by blaze as they come through the next left hander and blaze gets moved down he's off the track blaze off the track and that means Aylin can move up to p7 the nintendo driver managing to garner an advantage after that contact there i think there must have been between Aylin and dropped us poorly orange is now up to p6 regains his position and Aylin takes advantage nintendo up to p7 under his banner and glock as well looking to pounce on an unsuspecting infamous pillar because Pease has broken the DRS. It's another one of those evenings where we don't really talk much about Aylan and somehow in the mix. He's up to P7 and there's a big boost for Pease, that is, to get out of the DRS window of uh, Pillars. And obviously it's a brilliant opportunity for Glock to make a move and get himself back up into P2. It certainly will be because Glock now knows he'll have DRS on Pillars and Pillars, ca Pillars can't do anything about it uh, because Total P's, or oh, saying that, he's just, oh, he's so lucky. Pillars has managed, I think, to just get into the DRS. No, well, no, he hasn't activated it, so no, he hasn't. He is not. And uh, as they make their way now up through the next chicane, of course, this has allowed Glock to pull himself straight back into this. And he's brought Andenge with him as well. So Pillars under a lot of pressure now. He's got a lot to be worried about, albeit though he has got the DRS again back on total P's. So Glock now... Uh, he's got to try and make the most of his straight line speed now. This is the time where he needs to start making use of the pace in that Nintendo car. And the pace we're so used to seeing this man having throughout the Formula 4 season. Pillars in P2. P's in P1. Further down, there's movements behind. Blaze overtakes Aylan and manages to regain the position that he lost after being hampered. After that battle with JCB's dropped ass and poorly orange. But as he makes his way through now, he's back up into P7. A great move indeed. And and certainly all the hard work certainly that he got himself onto p1 with at the start of the race has been snatched away but he's done well to recover what he's lost yes Din. yeah a very good job indeed uh, so hopefully we will have a, a, a tussle near the end but it would be nice if the top three could bunch up a little bit more and uh wouldn't mind some uh, free wide action but uh, i think that's me being a little bit greedy chazza has left the session again so internet issues troubling him this evening and uh, yeah, it's just just very quiet now. Pillars is within DRS. There's a DRS change being formed now, but uh, it's going to be very close. I mean, it could be the case that um, Pease doesn't really want to really allow Glock a chance to really overtake um, Pillars at this time. I think he's using Pillars as sort of like a buffer to keep Glock at bay, uh, almost like a barrier, if you will, because he knows how quick Glock is. And if he was to dispatch Pillars, that would give, I suppose, Glock a little bit more clean air so he can really take the fight then to P1. And uh, that's exactly, I think, what Glock's thinking. If he can just dispatch Pillars now, it will give him a great opportunity to do it. But Pillars has already managed to skulk his way back to within five tenths of a second on the rear end of Total P. So what a recovery there from Pillars. After losing that P1 spot, he's going to be gutted that he's lost it. Because, of course, he put a lot of hard work into it. Because, remember, he was making serious strides, overtaking the likes of Glock and Blaze at the early stages. And uh, now he's relegated down to P2. That certainly did not, uh, certainly mustn't have been part of the plan for the MTV driver. But as they make their way through Sector 3 now, I'm now seeing Paul Watson has made his way up into P12, uh, overtaking that of... I think it was Chewy, and I think it has been a car that has been brought down. Energetic 6 has dropped right down the order. Um, good to see Xerxes is still out on track as well. He, he is not yet uh, DNF'd on this race, so he will bring some points home indeed for MTV. Some reasonable points as well, certainly where Pot 4 is concerned. As uh, we're now looking back, 
And you can see now that Pillars is still haunting the rear end of Total P's. But Glock is doing the same to Pillars. So this one is not over, Yestin. Yeah, and uh, the uh, ghost of Chazza jumps into the pit. So Paul Watson is up to P11. He's uh, around about 10 seconds away from Mateo. So if anything happens up in front near the end... Oh, and there it is. Blaze is out. He's lost the back end of the hairpin. And he's gone into the wall, and that is his race over for the pole sitter. And he is out of this Grand Prix. Yeah, he's in the wall. He is out, and that is absolutely, that is a real shame. I've got to say, that's going to allow Paul Watson to move into the top 10 as Pillars. Pillars regains top spot after a battle with Total Peas. We keep missing the key battles at the front here. And indeed, it's going to be Pillars who snatches it at the deck here with two laps remaining. And how key could that be, Estin? How key could that be? Because Glock as well is under pressure because that dead throws it up the inside. Oh my word, what a move. But Glock with the switch backs, insulating stuff. They're dancing all over Yas Marino circuit. And Glock has snatched it back. P3, what a battle between those two and I'm dead really threw caution to the wind but Glock that is a man of experience right there cut it inside with the switcheroo and got it done and now he's warming up the tyres Glock is looking like a man possessed right now Yestin a lovely switchback move for uh, Glock to uh, avoid Dan Denge in fairness as uh, he sent the Danny Rex style dive bomb down the inside in the right hand there but can Pease find a way to get past Pillars in the remaining two laps or will it be the MTV car coming across the line to take the win? Well, you've got to look. I'm looking at Glock right now, and he's looking really, really, really menacing right now. He's got plenty of ERS under his belt. He's been managing it well. And uh, Pease as well is right in the midst of Pillars as well. So there's lots still to happen out on track. We're on the penultimate lap here, of course. Lap 27 of 28. And a move being done by Andenge into the next left-hander. Chucks it up the inside. And they're going wheel to wheel. Round the next right-hander. He's going to try the switch back. The Glock pulled off on him. But nothing happening. He can't get it done. But he's got DRS this time. On Glock, Glock has got DRS on Total Peace as they make their way down towards the next left-hander. Peace knows he needs to throw caution to the wind as well. It's a four-way dance here. Two Jaguar cars, an MTV, a Nintendo car. Still plenty of battling left to go here at Abu Dhabi, Yastin. It is certainly not a boring race at all. Lots happening at the top end. Race win to be decided. One lap to go at the end of this lap. Well, um, everyone calling Yas Marina circuit boring in real life F1. Come and tune into Formula 4 because this is brilliant to see. Four cars all within a chance of a race win as they start the, uh, start the last lap of the Grand Prix. And and Denge is, and Denge is pitted. He's boxed. That's ruined, that's ruined that one. And, uh, and uh, well, they sent him down the pecking order a little bit. And uh, maybe a change of front wing, which obviously won't help. So we're down to three. Three cars, and there's only going to be one winner. Well, I got to, I got to say, they've, they've, all of these drivers at the top end have, have been absolutely admirable. It's been absolutely incredible to watch, and uh, I got to say, the action has been nothing short of exhilarating. And uh, as we now see, it is now time for them all to really put their efforts in on this final lap. Pillars has currently got the race sewn up in behind him. Pease is in behind him as well. Obviously subject to penalties. We'll have to review it at the end. But Pillars is leading the way on track. In behind him, Total Pease. In behind him is Glock. These three, they've been so, so tantalizing this season. The battling has been ferocious. Here comes Glock now trying to march up on Total Pease. Can he find anything at all? But Pease with that DRS that is so vital to him actually maintaining that P2 spot away from Glock. These three now leading their way through to Sector 3. Pillars coming around the next left hander a little bit of a slide there from Pease but he's still managing it well but Pillars is still in front as they come around the next right hander now very shortly very soon they'll be making their way through the final bends here Glock looking to set it up for one final part of magic here and the inside a little tap there on the rear end of Pease but he can't get it done it didn't work there Glock it didn't work and Pease holds on to P2 Pillars making his way down towards the next right hander Pease holding on to P2 Glock in the rear end maybe going for one more chance he does so, snatches it in the death, wheel to wheel towards the end, but it's going to be Pease that snatches the win. Unbelievable scenes there. Drop that, get to penalties. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. Unbelievable scenes. The penalties were more severe than we first expected. Drop that is your race winner. Total Pease in P2, Paulie Orange in P3. 
Pillars and Glock relegated to P's 4 and 5, Aelin P6, a tall twist at the top, but Peace takes P2, and that does not change for him, but Droftas out of nowhere on medium tyres at the end of the race, snatches P1, and he's got to be delighted with that, Yestin. Um, so all of a sudden, we now have a, uh, a, a Jaguar 1-3. I don't know how that's happened, but here we are. JCB and, won three uh, yesterday. JCB. Oh, JCB won three. There was a good chance you could have had a uh, a, a one four for um, Jaguar at one stage, but JCB with being just clean on track and they've nicked the double podium from absolutely nowhere. Brilliant to see. That is incredible. We spoke about it and I did warn it earlier on that Drofdas not being on penalties could have been the most vital part of this Grand Prix. I've got to say, amazing stuff. And uh, we've been treated to another clinic here at Formula 4. Uh, I, I'm just looking at the current array on track right now. Total P's just missing out on P1 spot by nigh on six thousandths of a second, uh, which is absolutely amazing when you think about it. Absolutely scintillating. Paulie Orange down in P3 after challenging Pillars as well. I mean, it looked like he was home and hosed at the start. I mean, he managed to get the getaway. He was leading the way. Just didn't happen for him. Glock again fell foul of the safety car a couple of times. There were some very interesting moments that happened out on track. But in Nintendo, as a team, did extremely well at the end of the race because they've got P's 5, 6, and 7. Three cars in the top 10, which is so vital. And another hat tip, Paul Watson, a top 10 finish. Jaguar have got cars in P's 2, 8, uh, sorry, P's 2, P's 2, 9 and 10. Paul Watson, amazingly, getting his first top 10 finish. Yeah, let's see. And he gets driver of the day from the F1 game for that drive, which is uh, brilliant to see. And uh, Energetic 6 deserves the, uh, the slap on the wrist for attempted donuts uh, while still in racing action, which uh, surely is forbidden around uh, leagues around the world but here's your podium and uh, i cannot believe what we've just witnessed no absolutely incredible yes din and there's your race winner the new portonian has done it for the first time this season Droftas is your p1 sitter the welshman his first win of the season he has got close before it could just not do it on quite on track but he's done it here today and he's going to be delighted jaguar there in p2 of course total p's after following up that you know, incredible victory at Spa last week with a P2. And here are your final classifications. Droftas is your race winner after winning it on penalties. Incredible scenes here. Total P's in P2 for Jaguar. Portly Orange for JCB in P3. Pillars in P4 for MTV. Glock, Aylan and Mateo there for Nintendo. Winding up in P's 5, 6 and 7 respectfully. Uh, I am Sloth in P8. An incredible result for him. In P9 for Anne Denge. Paul Watson in P10. I streams YouTube in P11. Chaz at P12, Chewy in P13, Xerxes finishes a race after a string of DNFs that landed him, certainly out of the race on many an occasion, finishes up in P14 and of course we lost Energetic 6, Blaze, LPE, Ramsell, all shot down and Bloomstar, real shame there, but what a phenomenal race yesterday, we've been treated to an absolute clinic and I'm delighted to say that we have the race winner with us here in the studio, Droftas, hello. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, yes, I can. Mate, phenomenal draft ass. Incredible result. Um, I, I don't. I can't imagine you saw that coming. Surely not. <laughs> well, the gap was coming down. I knew those softs would die, and it was just to hope they get penalties. There was no way I was winning that on pace today. Not a chance. And with safety cars coming out at the right time and them battling each other, it just let me sneak up. Me and Orange, we were just going along nicely, minding our own business, and luckily it was enough. Well, i got to say, it, I did quote it, and I said to Yestin as we were going through the safety cars, uh, I mean, the safety car, I suppose, really helped you because it brought the grid back closer together. Of course, once again, Glock almost hampered by the safety car, I would say, because if there was no safety car, I'm pretty sure he would have made it home and hosed. But the safety car brought you back into play, put everyone back on an equal footing of tyres. Would you say the safety car was the key factor here today? Oh, yeah, definitely. Both of them. The first one let me change my soft so I could go medium and the guys up front were, that were on the mediums, we, we all had to do a stop. I was on the fresher tyres and I knew I could do medium, medium from there. And they obviously had to use hards or softs at some point. And then the second one came out perfect for another set of mediums. And obviously they had to drag those soft tyres a lot longer than they should have been going. So it was always going to 
the safety car was massive. Wouldn't have won it without it. No, it, it certainly went uh, a long way towards your results. And of course, a very, very good collection of points there for JCB as well, because you are still chasing Nintendo for the uh, the, the Constructors' Championship. And of course, Paulie Orange managed to secure himself a, a P3 today. Uh, of course, what, what does this, you know, I suppose accumulation of points mean for the team? Because of course, going forward, I, I believe looking at the current deficit, uh, you currently land yourself approximately 64 points behind that of Nintendo. So that will bring you quite a little bit closer. Uh, I mean, obviously, Nintendo did themselves a few favours today by landing their cars in a string of uh, P's 5, 6, and 7, I think it was. Um, so, in fact, I think it was actually 7, 8, was it 6, 7, and 8, I think it was, in the end. So, obviously, that sort of equals it out. But certainly, the race win will certainly go a long way, as well as Paulie Orange's P3 as well. Yeah, hopefully we just need all four of us there to get finishing the races. Unlucky from Bloom today, he just lost the back end of the car. And as long as we keep finishing in the points, we'll just keep picking them up. It's going to be hard to beat them because they're really consistent. Yeah, well, I've got to say, looking ahead to the championship, do you see any like potential tracks where you see some further inroads for JCB? Is there any that you've got your eye on uh, to really sort of garner an advantage going into the season? Uh, everyone's pretty close at most of these tracks now. It's, it's going to be pretty much much of the same. It's whoever can get no penalties, take advantage of incidents like safety cars, and just be on the. Yeah, she was the right girl, basically. No, no, I don't even remember to speak. <laughs> no, very wise words indeed. But congratulations on a first win of the season, Droft As. Well done. And another podium as well to boot. Well done. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, we'll now move on to our second place man, of course, Total Peas. Peas, welcome back to the comms box. Another podium after uh, following up a very, very decent performance at Spa to capture your first win on your return. And uh, you follow it up with a PT. You must be pleased. No. No? No. It should have been a win. Well, to be fair, you were, you were sitting in P1 uh, for a period of that race as well. It just did, didn't quite go your way. Would you say the safety car upset your race slightly as well? Yeah, uh, 100%. The safety car didn't help Strat because we had to take the softs 13, 14 laps. So then really after the first one, I'd hope to take the mediums to lap 20 and take the softs from the, there to the end. But I had to go with what I had to work with. It didn't work out. And I thought I was clear from draft from pens. But then some last lap battling obviously allowed them to catch up a bit more than I wished. Yeah, it's not, it's not very often we get a thrilling race at Abu Dhabi. It's one of those races that tends to be more controlled. That's due to, obviously, the inclusion of chicanes, etc. like that. Obviously, chicanes don't really allow room for overtakes uh, and things of that nature. But, obviously, today we saw a lot more action here today. The DRS seemed to be much more effective this time, as well as the ERS. Uh, I mean, you were swapping positions at the top end so aggressively. Was it, yeah. was it literally a shotgun finish towards the end? Yeah, well, I knew um, Pillars and Glock both had six seconds. I had three, so I knew if, as long as I'd stay within three seconds of Pillars and he wouldn't just drive away, I, I would have finished ahead of both of them. But I didn't expect the medium runners to catch us so quickly at the end. Oh, I think it was the battling at the end, wasn't it? I think that brought Drofdas back into the race because, of course, they, you know, with, you, you were losing time, obviously, with the battling going on, etc., like that, between the likes of Glock. And you had Andenj coming into play as well. And uh, it sort of all accumulated into that final battle, didn't it? And I think that opened the door for Drofdas, in a sense, in order to sort of pounce it on on you guys at the end and just snatch that P1 at the death. I mean, I don't think even us, I don't think even we saw it, did we, Yestin, going through to that no, finish? No, I, th I thought, uh, well, I thought everyone was on three, three seconds of the penalty, so I thought it was quite straightforward who's won the race. Then I realised P's had, they're thinking, all right, all right, all right, fair enough, there's a couple of people who went to more. Then I realised the JCB have got a win free. And I was like, all oh, right, something, something's happened there. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to say uh, well done for P2. Obviously, could have been better. But uh, your third podium in a row now. Looking to get, carry on the good form? Yeah, I've been on a good run. It's like a second, a first, a second. I don't even know what track's next. But hopefully I can get some good results, bring Jaguar back up the standings where we really should be. Well, I can confirm that we've got United States up next, USA. Um, so we're off to the Ooh. Circuit of the Americas. So what are your thoughts on that circuit as we head stateside next week? Penalty Central. 
<laughs> it is absolutely we do see it quite frequently should we say even the professionals that I commentate on they can be very aggressive yeah. on the penalty side that's for sure uh, but what are your thoughts on USA do you think that that might be a more uh, a circuit suited to Jaguar uh, I mean can we expect a thrilling spill at the top where we, we start to see a win decided on penalties for that for that matter yeah most likely because there's a lot of fast guys here like look at today for example three of us were together for most of the race and there's other people who missed out like and then she missed out because of Strat, Blaze, who got caught up with his extra stop. And I, I, I expect Draft, Orange, or everyone to be back up the field in USA. So I don't know what King brings, but I think it'll be a close fight. Yeah, well, no, we'll certainly look forward to seeing it anyway. So uh, you can tune in next week for that one, folks. But I want to say congratulations again, Pease, on another podium. Following up a great performance at Spa with a, a P2 is certainly no mean feat. So I'd like to say well done, and we'll see you at the USA next week. Thank you. Well then. Uh, so once again, yes, then a uh, miraculous race. Not one we expected at Abu Dhabi, I don't think. No, like I said earlier on, that uh, real life, it's uh, not not brilliant. But obviously, league racing brings uh, a lot of fun for us commentators. And that's delivered tonight in a really good race and a, a brilliant result for JCB. Certainly was. And folks, you can be part of the action as well. Please make sure that you subscribe to the Formula 4 YouTube channel. Don't forget to leave a like on the stream as well. You can click the thumbs up. Do not forget to do that as well. And also, you could check out me and Yestin on Twitter as well. You could ch check me out on at CRGGO. Uh, of course, I'm commentator for various leagues as well as Formula 4. And uh, you can catch Yestin. Yestin, sling him over your, your Twitter name. Um, my Twitter is um, Ozone underscore Yestin with a capital O. And um, yeah, if you if you follow my Twitter, you'll have a little bit of league risk in there commentary, but mainly rugby union because uh, that's what I uh, mainly tweet about and normally get very upset about. But uh, <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, that's, that's that's me on Twitter. But uh, yeah, I, I hopefully I'll stick to F one. No, it's great to have you on board yesterday and obviously everyone do check him out lots of thoughts and feelings on the world of Welsh rugby I always have a little look myself and see what yesterday has been up to he certainly has some words of wisdom should we say on the world of rugby so it's great to great to have a look at but guys I'd like to say thank you to everybody for joining us here tonight on Formula 4 it's been an absolute pleasure please make sure like I said slam a, slam a like on the socials subscribe get involved and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time indeed. But from me and Yestin, it's been a pleasure. We'll see you next week for the USA. Goodbye.